Let me show senior quarterback. Rob Rob, senior linebacker. JJ Steven, senior linebacker. Dang no. Senior linebacker. Brady Hall, senior linebacker. Hunter Smith, senior defensive end. Brick on Bowen, class of 2022. All around. Tomorrow and night, senior. Off the line of the center. Kayan Boots, senior, O line, D line. Malachi Haynes, junior, wide receiver. Christian Crook, junior, DB. Jacob Wade, junior, wide receiver. Kevin Fish, junior, wide receiver, defense man. Jay White, in class of 2023, offensive line. Nick Kane, junior, defensive line. Jacob Reed, junior, defensive line. Cedar Bell, junior, offensive line. Blue Bell, sophomore, defensive end, full bell. Carson Wilson, sophomore, wide receiver. Tolerate, sophomore, wide receiver. Sophomore, wide receiver. Singular, sophomore, wide receiver. Devin Chip, turn, 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 go. I'm about to run it back, slide, DB. I turn out, sophomore, wide receiver. DJ Lyon, sophomore, right now. Charlie Sasser, sophomore, offensive defensive line. Billy Hardy, sophomore, linebacker. Steve McElhaney, offensive line, sophomore. Brian Cliff, Chris, say. Campbell Hook, class 125, defensive line, offensive line. Campbell Hook, freshman, offensive line, defensive line. Eli McElhaney, freshman, obviously. Kelly Jury, freshman, wide receiver. Fort Sims, freshman, full line. Academy, they were exchanging pleasantries at the 50-yard line midfield, and I kind of got lost in the shuffle down there and was trying to get uh, in to hear and talk to uh, Coach Hugh Fountain about his thoughts for this game, but uh, they were exchanging things, and I was always taught, you know, when those two men are talking, you don't ease up in there between them and interrupt them. So I just let them talk, and, and really, I guess I'll take part of the blame on that, if not all of it, because I actually looked around and I'd let time slip up on me before we actually had to try to get on the air. So I missed my opportunity for a really good coach's interview because Coach, uh, Coach Hugh Fountain, always a good interview, and uh, he's got plenty of things to say, and of course, uh, with this being the type of game that it, is, that it is, I'm sure his adrenaline's flowing. He's ready to go. What I what I did learn by talking to him pregame is he's really fired up about this ball game. You know, and, and one of the things he said, always speaking in coach speak, is, uh, is he said, you know, this isn't the most important game we'll play all year. He said, it's really an important game. He said, but this is really going to be a good gauge about where we are uh, here in the season. Now, we've played some good ball games you know the Cougars played probably um, one two three right out of the box two of those games on the road one of them at home they came out of the box and they knew that they were a good football uh, team by the fourth game of the season and then you play a good team the fourth game of the season in Wilcox and uh, and so everything is just really you know incredible as far as the way things are going so, um, so um, with that being, with said, that being said, I'm going to say this, like Joe, this. I can, Joe, hear, I can you, hear you, but I'm getting some I'm feedback. Getting some what feedback. I'm going to do is I'm going to go to you, take a two-minute two break, break, and we're going to try to figure out what we got going on this end to try to clear up the audio back to us. So take a two-minute commercial break, and we'll come back. You're listening to Escambia Academy Cougar Football on WBZR 105.9 FM and Atmore, or you may be watching on Facebook or YouTube. The football is flying through the air. Show your team pride for either Alabama or Auburn game day T-shirts available now for adults and children. Like us on Facebook for continuing updates and new arriving merchandise. Visit our website at southernsocialboutique.com or visit us at our store location at 101 Main Street in downtown Athol. You'll love the way you look when your clothes come from Southern Social Boutique. 
No visit to Ad War is complete until you've experienced Gather. The Gather restaurant, located at 111 West National Avenue in Atmore, has become the premier location for an incredible dining experience. From delectable appetizers and perfectly seasoned steaks to scrumptious dessert choices, your mouth is sure to water just thinking about your next trip to Gather. Great food, incredible service, and an authentic Southern charm will have you coming back again and again. Gather is open Tuesday through Saturday from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. The Gather restaurant is a proud sponsor of the Scambia Academy. Cougar Athletics. Here's some good policy from your local agent and auto owner's insurance. When your insurance policy comes from us, it comes with something extra, a real person. Don't buy from an insurance company with an 800 number and a voicemail menu. Auto owners insurance operates exclusively through local independent agencies here to help you 24-7. Now that's good policy. Please, Larry White Insurance Agency at 430 Palafox Street in Fullerton or call 296-2471. Why buy at Johnson's Hoyt? We put our customers' wants and needs first. We respect your time and offer a stress-free approach to selling cars. This is reflected in our winning Ford President's Award five years consecutively. From sales to service, we do everything we can to achieve the highest level of customer service. We are proud to be the premier Ford dealership in this area. We invite you to come by and see us at 1828 South Main Street in Atmore. To experience the no high best price, worst way of doing business, stop by and see Jim Johnson and the staff or give them a call, 251-368-2135. And welcome back as we continue here from uh, Tog Academy in Prattville. And I still have uh, some feedback uh, coming on the board here as we try to figure out what we've got going on. And uh, let's see what we got. That doesn't fix it. We're trying to fix things. Now, maybe that maybe that fixed it. Joe, can you steer, uh, still hear me there? If you will uh, let me know either by text or just break in and let me know because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to fix our issue with uh, the feedback. Anyway, I'm going to keep talking as we get set and working our way toward kickoff tonight. 13 and a half minutes to go before we kick this thing off in Prattville. And uh, we're just trying to figure out a few technical glitches and get things going. But uh, an exciting night for football. Both teams coming in highly touted. Uh, Escambia Academy uh, with an unblemished record of 6-0. and Also, Otago with an unblemished record of 6-0. and Coach and I talked about before the game, this is the reason you play these football games. This is the reason you strap it on for games just like this one is uh, getting an opportunity. You want your best to play against the, the, the best that's out there. That's the way you judge what kind of team you have. This will be one of those football games tonight. Oh, that's right. And, uh, and like we said earlier, they're, they're both two uh, fairly evenly matched teams, uh, both undefeated, ranked one and two in the state, regardless of classification. Uh, and whoever wins the game will at least probably have the upper edge in, in securing, if it's too early to talk about that, not too early to talk about it, home field advantage in the playoffs. So because they're in the same region in the same classification. Well, and, and you know, Rick, as we, as we move forward through the year, you know, you get an opportunity to play this team tonight. Um, very... Uh, probably will see this team again. You could very well, the winner of this game doesn't mean you're out of a playoff scenario or anything like that. Now, what this does mean is that uh, the winner of this game here tonight will probably host all the way through the playoffs. I mean, you'll end up hosting uh, up the playoff the games. Right, up until the championship game. So, uh, so that's what you've got to play for. But even a loss tonight does not knock you out because the top two teams uh, in the in the region in the area go, and so uh, the Cougars could very well be uh, you know one of those uh, uh, top two teams. So uh, or and and actually should be, and uh, so the Cougars. We hope uh, we play well tonight. We've got to eliminate mistakes. One of the mistakes that we've uh, had here recently is dropping the football. You know, you've got to hang on to the football. The Cougars run a uh, variety of offenses. They like to throw the ball. They like to spread you out. They like to throw it to the receivers and, and try to get them down the field. But the Cougars will also line up tight and try to run the ball over the top of you. That has worked all year long. But the problem that has been we've had the past several weeks 
is putting the football on the ground. They've got to eliminate that mistake, and then they should be fine. Another thing they they did a lot better at last week when they were down in Chipley, Florida, and I'm going to say that probably one of the best officiated games that I've seen in several years, not just this year, but in several years, but that group that handled the game last year, or last week, I'm sorry, as far as officials, very well officiated game, very few penalties on either team, no holding or anything like that. And something that we've talked about before, uh, sometimes officiating crews, they have a tendency to talk to each other. So if you have a team that maybe blocks with their hands extended a little bit and somebody you start seeing more holds than maybe that are actually necessary to see, and you get a lot of flags. And uh, therefore, a couple of games, we had a lot of holding calls that were called against us. We had balls that were dropped on the ground that went against us. And when you have, but here's the thing too, is you have those things that if if you're not a good football team, they can be catastrophic and crush you but the Cougars just continue to win. They overcome their own mistakes and continue to win, and that's big. Well, that's right. And, uh, and, and like you said, the, the biggest thing they, they, they've got to get corrected immediately, especially tonight, would be the, the little case of fumbleitis that, that's taken over the last couple of weeks. We're going to take a break here real quick and come back. We'll take about a two-minute break. Joe, just kind of monitor us here as we're going to take a break for the invocation and then also the national anthem, and then we'll come back with Cougar football on WBZR at more. And welcome back as we uh, get set to get this one started tonight from Prattville, Alabama, home of the Otaga Academy Generals. The Cougars uh, coming up here from uh, Canoe, Alabama, Atmore, on this Friday night to uh, hopefully be able to pick up another win. This is going to be a great football game. I tell you, the uh, 
Uh, both sides are eagerly anticipating this game, and uh, the Cougars are lined up far side. Uh, they've got their captains uh, along the way. Of course, we're on the home side in the press box this evening, and Otago is going to send out their captains and uh, get things going here as uh, the refereeing crew gets the uh, the guys on each sideline and uh, try to get going. First, let's give you the uh, the captains for Otago Academy, number five, and in Hillier, 6'3", 215-pounder. Uh, he's a captain. Also number six, that's going to be Farrell Banks, six foot, 180 pounds. Taking a look, let's see, also number eight, that's going to be James Wright. He looks like the quarterback, and uh, that's what he's listed at on the program. And then number 28, that's going to be Sean Pierce, and he's listed. 28, is that 28, or is it 29? I believe that's 29. Okay, yeah. my, my 58-year-old eyes failed me. It is 29. We'll say Eddie Thornton then. He's a defensive end at 6 foot, 190 pounds. All these, all these kids are seniors that are captains for Otago Academy this evening. Looking uh, far side, uh, let's see. For the Cougars, I do see uh, Jadaniel Bubba Nettles out there as a captain. And I see um, Landon Sims. He's also a captain for the Cougars. And the other two numbers are blocked right now as I uh, try to, I think Tamarian Knight is one of the uh, captains out there. And the other one has got his shirt pulled up and tucked in. And so that one's a little bit hard to see, but that's okay. He, that's a, he's making a fashion statement out there <laughs> is what he's doing. Showing a little mid-drift on a Friday night here in Prattville, Alabama. White Hat, the head referee, he's giving uh, giving the final instructions there to both teams. Of course, the Cougars being on the road, they will call the coin toss. And the winner of the coin toss will get an opportunity to select what they want to do. They're showing it to them that it's not one of those double-headed coins. I've heard people talk about those, never actually ever seen one, and certainly hadn't seen one used in a game. Looks like the Cougars won the toss, and they're going to defer to the second half. That's so right. more than likely, Prattville will take the football. That's a 99.9% .9 guess. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. I have seen uh, players mess up and, and <laughs> say the wrong thing <laughs> before. So. so for the ball game to start, Prattville will receive the kick. The Cougars, if you're looking at your radio, will be kicking left to right. And so when we get this thing started, that's the way we'll line up. The uh, generals will be on offense first. The Cougars will be on defense, and we're not far away from getting this thing uh, started. So, uh, Rick, here we are. I mean, another Friday night uh, here in, in the state of Alabama to play high school football, and it's a great, a great night. The temperature's almost perfect. Little touch of humidity in the air, but it's not hot. It's certainly not like it was back at the beginning of August. I know. I think it's a perfect night for football. It's supposed to be in the in the mid 60s uh, here at kickoff, and uh, humidity doesn't feel too bad to me anyhow. So it looks like a good night for football. It is a good night. Everybody's excited. Of course, a big home crowd here tonight. As they uh, actually, uh, it's pretty cool because of the month of October. Uh, everybody is um, paying homage to. Uh, folks, there it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and you'll see uh, a lot of the kids wearing things that are pink. As a matter of fact, down in Florida last week when we were there, uh, we had referees that even had pink penalty flags. That was the first time I'd ever seen those, but uh, it was a little different on the field when somebody gets called for holding. Doesn't mean quite as much when you hit them with a pink flag, you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, it kind of softens the whole holding penalty up a little bit. So uh, anyway, 12 minutes on the clock. As we get set and ready to go, the um, umpiring crew or, or refereeing crew is out in the middle of the field, and uh, they're come. fixing a break. Here come the generals. Yep, the generals are now taking the field, and uh, the Cougars are already far side ready to go. And uh, extended little uh, visit there. The Ralphs have not broken and gone to their positions yet, but now they're uh, finishing up. Little knuckle bump from everybody, and now here we go. The white hat, the uh, head referee, he'll be headed down uh, to the end zone that will be uh, guarded by the Prattville Generals. 
And, of course, he'll blow the whistle. His whistle means the most out there. He'll get everything started. And um, Landon Sims for the Cougars. He's going to be the kicker, the quarterback, the uh, safety on uh, defense. He does a lot of stuff. And so he's going to tee the ball up at the 40 and get ready to kick it off, and we'll get this thing started. Both both side judges now go to their respective positions, and we're about ready to get things started. There's the whistle. Landon Sims approaches the football. It's a high end-over-end kick. It's going to be fielded at about the 25 and fair, fair caught. caught. Yes, it was. Fair catch is going to be there, so that's where the ball will be spotted, and it'll be first down and 10 for the Generals from about their own 25-yard line. Looks like it's a little ahead of the 25. We'll call it the 26. Yeah, 26. So no time off the clock as the kick is not uh, – the clock doesn't start until somebody fields the ball and there's some forward momentum. So the fair catch, it nullifies anything being off the clock. So it's 12 minutes, and Otago is going to break the huddle. There's going to be a timeout on the officials, and they're pointing something out at the sideline to try to straighten it out. They straighten it out, and he blows the ball back in place, so that'll start the 25-second clock. First play from scrimmage here in this ball game in Prattville, Alabama, between uh, Otago Academy and Escambia. Movement up front, and that looks like it's going to be against the Cougars as uh, J.J. Stevens, number 10, the linebacker, he may have jumped in there a little quick. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think he crossed the neutrals. That's going to be against Yeah, it's okay. Otago. It's going to be against Otago. So, J.J. ran up in there like he was giving away the fact that he was fixing to go on a run blitz, and somebody moved early for Otago in the offensive line. So, that will bring up a five-yard mark off, first down and 15 now for Otago. The ball backs up to the about the 21-yard line. It's really a smart move by J.J. Stevens. I mean, he, he really did cause that, and it looked like on purpose. <laughs> Pistol offense, slots left and right, man in motion. Here comes a little toss, going to come around this way. Cougars with pretty good defense there as the running back goes down. He does gain about four, maybe five yards on the carry. But really a good job by the Cougar defense as they set the edge, and they'll be able to uh, – keep the running back from really turning the corner with a full head of steam. If they'd have made the first tackle, it would have been no gain. Yeah, it was good containment by J.J. Stevens and Bubba Nettles both on that. They, they strung it out and did just what you're supposed to do. Kept him to their inside shoulder. Play gains four yards. It'll be second down and six. There's a little toss. Going to be fielded. Missed tackle in the backfield. Cougars are trying to break to the football. They do get there. And I tell you what helped them out right there after the missed tackle is the fact that the ball itself um, went behind the line of scrimmage. So uh, it was really a lateral is what it was. He threw it backwards, and uh, he was way back there. If he'd have got the tackle back there, it would have really been, been a good play. But it's still a good play. It's third and long. And I gave the wrong yardage a while ago because I forgot about the, uh, the penalty. But uh, we had 15 to go, so now with the yardage that was gained on that play, it is going to be third down, and it looks like third down and about seven yards to go. 10-35 and counting here in the first quarter. This game just underway. Cougars of Escambia Academy against the Ooh, Generals That will definitely of be against Otago. the Generals, yeah. They're uh, split in out there, started early. And nobody else had moved. And so guilty of that infraction, number seven, that's going to be Noah Ray, a wide receiver defensive back for the Generals, and he jumped a little early. So penalty yardage is going to back the ball up five yards. It'll be third down and 12. Twenty-five second clock is uh, wound into motion and is the game clock. We have another penalty. Flags down on the play. This is going to be movement on Otago. Oh, it's nope. going to be offsides, offsides this time against yeah. the Cougars. So the Cougars were ahead in the five-yard penalty uh, game, but they just gave the five yards back. 
So that's still going to be third down, and it'll be back to third down and seven. Third down and seven, the ball out at the general's 30-yard line. Quarterback back to throw. Got a man. He's going to overthrow him. He was not open as uh, number five for the generals out here was double covered. That's going to be Andon Hillier. Hillier was double covered by the Cougars. Ball falls harmlessly to the ground incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down and seven, and it looks like the punting unit for the generals taking the field. Punting unit there, back deep to receive for the Cougars, number two. That's going to be Landon Sims. There's the punt. It's away. Good punt. It is a good punt. The ball's going to be fielded by Sims, and he's immediately knocked down at about the 36, maybe 37-yard line. Sims did a good job coming up and not letting that ball hit the ground because if the ball hits the ground right there, it would have probably been a big general's roll and rolled deeper into Cougar territory. But the Cougar offense is going to come out on the field, and they are going to have it first down and 10. At 35, so it should be pretty good field position. But it was a good punt, good hang time. He got hit as soon as he, as soon as he caught the ball. Yes. Nine minutes and 18 seconds to go here in the game, uh, in the game, in the first quarter. About a four-yard gain on that one, Ricky. Yeah, uh, well, thank you. I had some business I needed to take care of right there, but we took care of that. Cougars, uh, of course, they don't huddle, but they've got trip receivers stacked over here to the right-hand side. No wide out to the left-hand side. That's all quarterback run right there. As number two, Landon Sims, is going to take the ball off right tackle. It looks like, and he does, have enough for a first down, so the Cougars will have a first down and 10 as the chains will move. It'll be first down and 10 Cougars, ball spotted at the 47-yard line. Eight thirty-seven and counting here in the first quarter, no score. Cougars with the first time they've had the ball on offense. There's Jadaniel Nettles. He's going to be faked to number two, Landon Sims. Quarterback keeps the ball right up the middle as they use Bubba as a decoy and fake to him as he runs in motion from right to left. All eyes were on Bubba, and Landon Sims just goes right up the middle for a gain of about eight yards. Yeah, that was a quarterback uh, run away. Second down and two. The Cougars are not going to huddle, of course. They always just look to the sideline. This play is signaled in, and then everybody will check their wristband to see what play we're going to run. Trip receivers to the left, tight end to the right. Single set back in the backfield. That's going to be Landon Sims. <laughs> Penalty flags fly. As somebody in the interior line moved, I'm not sure which way it's going to go. And it's going to go against the Tauga. That'll be a five-yard mark off and a first down for the Cougars. So both teams kind of biting themselves here early in the ball game with five-yard penalties. <laughs> Almost doing the same things, running up and showing a possible blitz and causing the other guy to jump. <laughs> Sims is going to keep the football again as he fakes to Bubba Nettles. Almost the same play that was run earlier, just in that formation, Bubba was in the backfield. And he got a good gain out of it, got about four yards. 
Second down and six. The ball in Cougar ter- or correction in general territory now. As it's marked down, looks like it's on about the 41-yard line. Cougars have moved the football pretty well, and it's basically been on the legs of Landon Sims as he's just used his backs as decoys and kept the ball himself primarily. There it is again. There it does it again. They run it again. He's going to get outside. Almost breaks the tackle. Good defense there by, uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get a number. I want to say 18. That would be Jalen Anderson, maybe. It does look like Jalen Anderson making a defensive play there for A really the good defensive play. He doesn't make that, and Landon runs all the way to the end zone. He, was a, he tripped him up right there at the end. He's got a cougar down. Yep, third down and four. And this is early, so, uh, you know, you really don't think that cramps are an issue here. This is probably going to be an actual injury as uh, he's grabbing his um, calf to the rear, of course. I think he's okay. You never know about hydration with these kids, and especially, I mean, I remember some years ago, I mean, I was in pretty good shape as a, as a high school player, and I remember one time I – I cramped up running onto the field, but I I, I talked to a uh, to a trainer about that later, and he said that sometimes when you get that adrenaline, you get such a rush of adrenaline in your body that it just tenses your muscles up anyway, and uh, that sometimes things like that just happen. Oh, that's right. Plus, you don't know what's been going on all week. It's an all week diet. It's not and like as you've alluded to before. It's not just what you you've done today. Third down and four. Cougars. Ball spotted at. Uh, the general 34-yard line. There's the snap. Pitch is bobbled. It's going to be pitched, oh. and he's pitched it on the ground, and somebody's got to get on it. And Bubba that was just a – yeah, that was an ill-advised pitch. Bubba real – I mean, not Bubba, but uh, – Landon. Landon – yeah, number two, Landon Sims. He realized he was in trouble after he bobbled the snap, and the bobbled snap just really threw the whole play out of kilter. And he tried to pitch it right there yeah, at the end. Got a punt right here, and I don't blame him. So the Cougars are going to punt on fourth down. It's fourth down and ten. And the Cougars really lucky that they didn't give the ball back to the they Generals sure right there at that point. Yeah, Bubba did a good job of getting on that. Clock running with 5:20 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Cougars are going to punt the football. There's the. Australian-style little punt. Running back with the football, catches it at about the 10-yard line, comes across the 15 out to about the 17, maybe the 19-yard line is where they spot him down. And that's where the generals will take over the football there. Let's take a break and come back. You're listening to Escambia Academy Cougar Football on WBZR 105.9 FM in Atmore, or you may be watching on Facebook or YouTube. That was an incomplete pass by Tog on that one. Four fifty-six to go here in the first quarter, and we're having all kinds of troubles here tonight, technically being able to hear back to the station, as we cannot hear any commercials or anything coming back to us. So what we're going to do is we're just going to continue talking and do the best we can on our end to try to get this problem solved. Not sure what it is. Otago Generals with the football. Looking to throw. Quarterback's going to take the ball and throw it. He's got a lot of room right down the middle of the field, and he is going to slide after gaining enough for a first down and a bunch more. As the ball comes all the way out across the 45, it'll be spotted down at the 48-yard line, where it'll be first down in 10 generals from that spot. 
Yeah, he felt pressure on the outside. Number 10, Robert Rose, their quarterback, just, just took off up the middle with it like he should have. There's the snap. Back to throw, got pressure on him. Now he's being flushed out of the pocket, running with the football is number 10. And that's going to be Robert Rose, the quarterback. Good, good pressure on him, and uh, J.J. Stevens got him, I mean, uh, got him right there at the end. So he gained a little bit, three yards on that one, on a scramble. Second down and seven for the Generals. Ball now in Cougar territory at the 49-yard line. Four twenty-nine to go here in the first quarter. Generals break the huddle. They've got a slot set far right. Tight end to the left. H back in the backfield. It's going to be the handoff to number four. He's looking for running room. Got pretty good yardage there. Does number four. That's going to be uh, Carl Ligon. 5'10", 175-pound running back. And a senior. Be just short of a first down here. Third down and one for the Generals. There's the snap. Handoff is going to be to the back. Looking for running room. He's being stretched out. Now he turns the corner. There's a holding that should have been called on the corner but was not. As the wide receiver to this side had a handful of jersey and didn't turn it loose. <laughs> but no call. And that play gains enough for a first down. 3.43 to go here in the first quarter. No score still. Generals with the football as they continue to march in Cougar territory. Ball spotted at the 30-yard line. Taga's going on a quick count most plays. Yeah, he's going to have to get in position a little quicker. Wide receivers wide to both sides. Quarterback looking to throw. Nobody open. He's going to pull it down and run. Now he's being flushed and run out of bounds. So that's going to be Robert Rose again, yeah, he number ten. A couple on that one, not much though. Good pressure by the Cougars right up the middle. Second down in eight. Well, like Nick Kane shoved his man all the way back into the quarterback and flushed him. With the play running out of bounds, the clock is stopped with three thirty-four here in the first in the first quarter. As we continue, we're um, trying to um, fix. Oh, he's got a man wide open, and he is beat for a touchdown as somebody released the slot receiver to the far side, and he is wide open. And Robert Rose, the quarterback for the Generals, finds him wide open. Touchdown early in the ball game with 3.29 to go here in the first quarter. It's a Tauga 6, a Scambia nothing. Definitely, uh, I think we can call that one a busted coverage. <laughs> Certainly a busted coverage as uh, the receiver just ran down and nobody was with him. Nobody ran with him, and he was wide open. Matter of fact, that's one of those that you, you get scared about sometime because he may have been so wide open. Those are usually the ones that are easiest to drop. There's the point after. It's good. And it is going to be good. And so with 3.29 to go here in the first quarter the score Otaga Academy 7 Escambia Academy nothing we'll take a break and come back you're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR 105.9 FM and Atmore or you may be listening on Facebook or YouTube unique but one thing is for sure everywhere you go you'll find people who take pride in their homes indoors outdoors they're always working on something. At your local Ace, we're proud to play our communities we serve. And we want you to know that whatever projects you're planning, whether they're big or small, we'll be there. Have a question? Come in and ask. Our associates will be glad to help. They'll show you everything you'll need to get started. Give you friendly tips and expert advice and getting great results. Helpful ways to help you save time and money. Painting a room a new color. Getting the lawn just right. From changing porch light to hanging pictures on the wall. If you need help, your local ace is just minutes away. Stop by today. Ace, the helpful place. The Bondrant Lumber and Hardware with the locations in Bruton, Century, and Atmore. more. 
And welcome back as we continue here in the first quarter of play. We may have figured out our issue with the uh, with the audio on our end, and hopefully we did as we've we've struggled here during the first quarter of this one. But it looks like we've uh, got things a little better squared away now so we can now hear the station again so everything is good there and that's always a good thing because we have to know when our commercials end on our end or sometimes we may walk on the commercials and we don't want to do that because we've got uh, advertisers that are spending good money to uh, hear their businesses uh, marketed during these football games on Friday night we want to give um, our our a do to all our uh, sponsors that allow us to come and bring you high school football on a Friday night. 3.29 to go. A toggle with the lead, 7 to nothing. The Cougars are getting the football back. There's a high end over end kick. Going to be fielded by number 22 of the Cougars. Christian Crook. Yeah, actually, number three is Christian Crook. Who is 22? Let's see, I'm looking down my roster and. I'm not going to be able to get it, get to it in time. So uh, anyway, we'll give him some, uh, give him some kudos here in a little bit. 3:19 to go here in the first quarter. Cougars get the football back for the second time in the ball game. They've got to generate some offense here as uh, they got beat by a big play, a busted coverage on the pass play. Cougars with wide receivers all over the field. One far left, a slot to the right. Handoff is going to be right up the middle. I believe that was uh, Jadaniel Bubba Nettles. Looks like he might have picked up about four or five. Yeah, that is going to be a gain of five, Rick. It's going to come out across the 35 and be spotted down at about the 38-yard line. Where it'll be second down, second down and five yards to go. Number two, Landon Sims puts the ball into the midsection of Jadaniel Bubba Nettles, then pulls it out. Follows his back to near first it, down yards. It's going to be close. He may be just short. They're showing him far side about a football short. Yeah. 316 and counting here in the ball game. There's a run off left tackle for first down yardage. And more. About a 10 yard run. Good run by Bubba. I believe that was Bubba one. Looked like him. Yep, that was Bubba. Ran like him. <laughs> So first down and 10 for the Cougars as they cross into general territory. Ball's going to be spotted at the general's 47-yard line. It walks like a bubble, runs like a bubble, and talks like a bubble. It's a bubble. It's got to be a bubble. His mama named him Jadaniel. There's the snap. Handoff is going to be to Jadaniel Bubba Nettles right up the middle, and uh, good defense there by the generals as they saw that play coming. But Jadaniel still gains about a yard on the play. Actually, we'll give him a yard and a half, and we'll call it second down and a long eight as the ball nears the – it's going to be spotted at the 46-yard line. Clock still running with a minute 18 to go here first quarter. Cougars with the football. Handoff is going to be to Jadaniel Nettles. He breaks one tackle, spins out of one, runs hard, and runs over a would-be defender. And I do mean he ran over him. Looks like he's got enough for a first down, but we haven't gotten the signal yet. First and, down. yes, they are going to call it a first down as the man in the white hat steps up and says, yep, that's enough. And the clock still runs now with less than a minute to go in the first quarter. The Cougars with the football driving toward the end zone. There's a man open far side. Oh, he see caught it. that. I'm not sure he may have been out of bounds, and I think that's what they're saying. 
is that the receiver was out of bounds when he <laughs> caught the football. Okay. Of course, I, I hear people below us. You, you hear a lot of things here from the stands a lot of times, and people not sometimes not understanding what they're looking at. But they looked at that formation, and I heard somebody say that the Cougars didn't have enough men in the backfield. But if you look, they do. They've got All they've got to have is four. And there's uh, that's going to be number two. Oh, he's going. Landon Sims, as he keeps the ball around left end, he faked to Jadaniel Nettles, number 11, coming this way. Pulled the ball out of his stomach, went around left in and into the end zone for a touchdown. So that's going to make the score now. Otaga 7, Cougars 6. He fooled everybody on that play, including me. <laughs> uh, that's right. He fooled me there for a second because I, the way, um, the way Bubba acted when the ball was stuck in his gut, I thought he had it as he got that forward body lean like you want to see a running back do. But Landon Sims pulled it out and made it into the end zone. And so with 30.6 seconds left to go here in the first quarter, the score, Otaga 7, Cougars 6. There's a yeah, point good. after is going to be up and good, so we've got a tie score. And with only 30 seconds left to go here in the first quarter, we'll just keep it right here until the quarter break. So a good, de good deal there for the Cougars as uh, a good drive put together. The Cougars struggled a little bit there on their first offensive possession. But then they were able to get things uh, going there. They, um, you know, on the first offensive possession, primarily on the legs of uh, number two, Landon Sims, and then on this second thing, they've included some more folks getting involved. And uh, and also no penalties on that drive. And, and that's really a big improvement. You know, one of the things that Coach uh, Hugh Fountain and me talked about prior to the game uh, when I was down on the field trying to get my interview with him is um, he talked about one thing that they've worked on all week long and been working on for, for several weeks in a row is trying to eliminate some of the penalties. And it looks like so far in this ball game they've been able to do th just that. If you think about it, they had several third downs on, on that drive, or at least a couple, and a penalty could have killed, killed the drive on, on any of those. So, uh, so penalties can't hurt you, and they, they can't be drive stoppers. 30.6 seconds to go here in the first quarter as Landon Sims going to tee the ball up at the 40, and he'll do the kicking. There's the high kick. It's going to be angled toward the far sideline. Going to be fielded there at about the 15-yard line. Back still on his feet as he brings the ball back about five, maybe six yards from where he caught it. And it'll be first down and 10 there for the Generals. Ball looks like it's going to be spotted near the 25-yard line. Yeah, right on the 25. 23.6 seconds left to go here first quarter. All tied up at 7-7. Number one against number two. The Cougars number one, the Otaga Generals number two, and these cats are in the same, they're in the same classification. They're in the same region. Generals break the huddle. They've got a slot set left side, wide receiver set far right, and he leaves early. And he. Okay. I saw their guy move. I didn't see anything on our side. Maybe somebody on this side was, uh, somebody on this side may have jumped. There's the snap. Handoff's going to be to the back. Got running room far side. Somebody's got to make a tackle. Still on his feet. Finally gets knocked out of bounds, but not before he gains first down yardage. On the carry is going to be number four. That's Carl Ligon, number, uh, number four, 5'10", 175 pounds, senior. Running back, defensive back. He gains enough for a first down. The ball comes out to the 50. 
and it'll be spotted there, first down and 10 for the Generals. 17.3 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. There's the snap. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's pointing out, trying to get a block. And Jadaniel Bubba Nettles is able to wrestle him down as the ball crosses the 40 in Cougar territory. It's going to be spotted down at about the 38. 9.6 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Generals with the football as the clock is wound. And that's probably going to, yep, that's going to wrap things up here for the first quarter. So we'll go ahead and take a break and then come back. All tied up at 7. We figured it would be something like this. It's going to be a close game all night. Tied up at 7 at the end of the first quarter. You're listening to Escambia Academy Cougar Football on WBZR 105.9 FM and Atmore. Or you could be watching on Facebook or YouTube. Southern Social Boutique has and the trendiest clothes to make you look for your very best. Southern Social Boutique always has something you'll love to wear at a price you can surely afford. And with all the excitement of footballs flying through the air, show your team pride for either Alabama or Auburn game day t-shirts available now for adults and children. Like us on Facebook for continuing updates and new arriving merchandise, visit our website at southernsocialboutique.com or visit us at our store location at 101 Main Street in downtown Atmore. You'll love the way you look when your clothes come from Southern Social Boutique. No visit to add more is complete until you've experienced Gather. The Gather restaurant, located at 111 West National Avenue in Atmore, has become the premier location for an incredible dining experience. From delectable appetizers and perfectly seasoned steaks to scrumptious dessert choices, your mouth is sure to water just thinking about your next trip to Gather. Great food, incredible service, and an authentic southern charm will have you coming back again and again. Gather is open Tuesday through Saturday from 4 p.m. till 9 p.m. The Gather restaurant is a proud sponsor of the Scambia Academy. And welcome back as we continue on this Friday night from Prattville, Alabama. 12 minutes on the clock as we get set to start the second quarter of play. Otaga Academy with the football in Cougar territory. Ball spotted at about the Cougar 38-yard line. Handoff is going to be to number four. He's got running room far sideline, and he's finally going to be knocked out of bounds. But Carl... Yeah, that Ligon was on Ligon. the carry. Yep. It's a good carry around left end. That kid's got some speed. I tell you, when he gets out there on that corner and turns it up, and especially the way his wide receivers and everything are blocking for him out there on the edge, if you let him turn those shoulders up and get them square. He can move, yeah, and that was just a straight sweep. Cougars got to do a little better job keeping eyes in the backfield and on the football. First down and 10. Ball inside the 25 at about the 24. And timeout is going to be called as the 25-second clock was running down. So 11.55 to go here in the first half. 7-7 seven to seven the score. And in this ball game tonight, if you're not aware, I mean, they're basically two coaching legends. Um, you know, Coach Bobby Carr in the AISA, he was at Edgewood for a long time. He's been here at Otago for a long time. He's coached around. People know him. He's always won is the big thing. I, I, I tell you, I kind of looked at some of his uh, information on Max Preps today. And uh, everywhere he's been, he's been a winner. And he's a good football coach. And, of course, you can tell tonight just by this team, the way it's playing here early in this one, they're well coached. They are they're, they got a good group. They uh, The offense moves the football. Uh, they play good defense. So a good, well-rounded, all-around Otago General football team here on the field tonight. Ah, that's right. And, and we knew that coming in, it would be a, be a close game. And so far it has been. And, and you're right, they're both two very good football coaches, been successful wherever they've been. Yeah, Coach Hugh Fountain's just a legend. He's been a legend in Alabama High School Athletic Association football and in uh, AISA ball. Been doing it for a long time. There's the snap. Going to be a direct snap to number 18 no, for the Generals. Didn't fool anybody that time. But. Jalen Anderson takes the direct snap and goes left. 
he's going to gain maybe a yard on the carry. And that's just one of those other wrinkles that really you put in the game to keep people still. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, they, they tried to outmaneuver the Cougars right there with, with that kind of thing. But what that does is that makes your linebacker slow down from releasing and going to the to the movement of the ball. So they, they use this to set up something else. Yeah, it's sort of a, a, a type of counter. It was a direct snap, but he went the opposite direction of everybody else. So you're exactly right about that. Second down and nine. Generals with the football. Handoff Sweet. is going to be to number four again. He's got running room and finally going to be knocked out of bounds as he's going to have way enough for a first down. They're not really doing anything special on that. They're just straight sweeps, and he turns his shoulders up the field, and, and he can motor. Well, what makes your straight sweeps like that work is you're blocking on the edge. Yeah, and, and he had it. you got to get everybody. you got to get a helmet on a helmet out there, and everybody's got to – not just block, but th this isn't one of those blocks where you hit your guy and release him. You've got, got to actually establish position on a block and maintain your block until the running back runs by you. Looks like it's going to be first and goal at about the 10. So generals with the football, Cougars on defense. They've got their back against the goal line. And there's good defense there by the Cougars as the handoff was to four again. That's going to be Carl Ligon. They have even lost a half a yard on that one. That was good defense. So second down and goal. Little confusion there as the quarterback was coming to the sideline looking to the coach. Now they're sending in number 18 with a play. That's going to be number 18, Jalen Anderson. So Anderson goes on, carries the play in. Second down and goal for Otago. Wide receiver, wide left, slot to the right. Now they send a third receiver over here. Now a man goes in motion. A lot of movement on this offensive play. Quarterback is going to be sat you know, as that, nobody open. That had worked for him a couple of times. I think he meant to scramble the whole time looking for a hole, but they, had it, uh, they didn't leave him any hole to scramble through on that one. They just smothered him. Cougars do a good job there on defense That's as the loss, loss of yardage. Yes, it, it's a, it is a big loss. That's about a 10-yard loss from the 10 all the way back to the 20. Third so, goal from about the 21 or 20. Yeah, about the 21-yard line. Third and goal from about the 21-yard line. 9.31 22. to go here in the first half. Man in motion. Fake is going to be to him looking downfield. Eyes downfield. Quarterback looking to throw. He's oh. got a man wide open far sideline as nobody picked up the back out of the backfield. Little move makes a couple of people miss. He's still got to get in to get uh, because they've got to score. He didn't quite get in, so it's going to be fourth and goal. And, boy, a big defensive play would have been just a grand thing for the Cougars. But they left number eight, who went in motion, James Wright. Nobody picked him up on the motion. And he was left in the flat standing wide open. And he just caught the football and ran it as far as he could. About fourth and about, looks like three, Ricky. Fourth down and goal from the three. Cougars going to have to do something here. They need to stop. Clock stopped at 9.08 to go here in the first or first half. Looking to throw it. Got a man open. Touchdown. And he caught it for a touchdown. As the Cougars left another man wide open in the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown. On the catch there, number one, Josh Palmer. And he is a junior, 6'4", 200-pounder. And he made the catch for the touchdown for Otago. And it was a really good catch. He stretched out to get it. 9.03 to go here in the first half. 13-7 to the score. Point after touchdown coming. Snap is down. Kick is up. Kick is good. So 
With 9.03 to go here in the first half, the score, Escambia or Atoga Academy 14, Escambia Academy 7, we'll be back. You're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR Atmore, or you may be watching on Facebook or YouTube. and auto owner's insurance. When your insurance policy comes from us, it comes with something extra, a real person. Don't buy from an insurance company with an 800 number and a voicemail menu. Auto owner's insurance operates exclusively through local independent agencies here to help you 24-7. Now that's good policy. Larry White Insurance Agency at 430 Palafox Street in Fullerton or call 296 296- Two four seven one. Why buy at Johnson Ford? We put our customers' wants and needs first. We respect your time and offer a stress-free approach to selling cars. This is reflected in our winning Ford President's Award five years consecutively. From sales to service, we do everything we can to achieve the highest level of customer service. We are proud to be the premier Ford dealership in this area. We invite you to come by and see us at 1828 South Main Street in Atmore. To experience the no hassle, best price, worst way of doing business. Stop by and see Jim Johnson and the staff or give them a call. 251-368-2135. Everything situated here with the board. Uh, Where we are here in Prattville, we're in the press box, but uh, there's a level between... um, me and Rick and Tim. Tim's above us on the next floor. And so Tim's got all the video going and we've got the audio going down here. And I've done a poor job with the audio tonight trying to do uh, some of the technical stuff down here, trying to get... Well, you have a a really weak Wi-Fi signal here in the middle with all this tin around us. uh, Yeah, well, I think think our main problem here in the first half of this was not a Wi-Fi problem. I think there was a short between the floor and the board is what the problem was, and it went through me. You know, I mean, I mean that's you know that's the deal. Is the IT guys at work always say, "What's wrong with your computer?" And I say, "I don't know." And they say, "Well, we can tell you what it is. There's a short between the floor and the keyboard." So <laughs> that's uh, that that's the problem. But anyway, Cougars with the football, first down and ten. Ball spotted on their own 33-yard line, trailing in the ball game by a score of 14 to seven. Landon Sims is going to keep the football, but uh, good defense there by the Generals. As number one, that's Josh Palmer. That's who caught the touchdown pass for the Generals early. He stays at home, and on that little run pass option that the Cougars ran, he sniffed it out and dropped Landon Sims for a loss. Play loses two yards. Clock moving with 8.26 to go here in the First half, Landon Sims back to throw from the shotgun. Looking, looking, he's going to be flushed. He steps up in the pocket, still looking to throw. Gets it out to a back out of the backfield. A missed tackle. And let's let's see, right there at the... Bubba Nettles catches the football. And, I mean, there are some tremendous hits going on (laughs) as that was just a broken play. That that almost looked like that Bo Nix play from the Auburn LSU game. It certainly did. I tell you, there was a lot of stuff going on on that one play. First down. And it's going to be enough for a first down. Landon Sims did an incredible job there just staying on his feet, keeping the play alive, and then having the wherewithal to find Bubba Nettles standing over to his right, get him the football, and Bubba just does what Bubba does and ran for a first down. Otherwise, that would have been about a 15-yard loss. It went from a 15-yard loss to a first down. So Cougars with uh, first down and 10, 731 and counting here in the first half. Cougars in the I formation. It's going to be pulled. Landon Sims with the football. He's going to pitch it. Nobody out here on the option. Nettles still with the football, still on his feet as he battles for yardage and finally is going to be corralled and dropped at about the 31-yard line. That option caught me. I take deep and it's completely flat-footed in that time. They- well, it was, it was almost perfectly run by the offense there, the Cougars, as Landon Sims took the ball just as far. You know, a quarterback's got to have guts to run the option because you got to give up your body and give up, uh, you know, you got to stick your face in the face of the defensive end. And he did just that and was able to get the pitch away. Now on first down, Cougars are going to lose about a half yard as it looks like 
the Generals are packing it up inside, trying to stop the running plays of the Cougars. And, of course, the Cougars came out. They were getting some very good yardage in the first quarter of this ball game, running between the tackles. Second down and 11, ball spotted at the general 33-yard line. I think your assessment's spot on there. They really have it stacked up in there now. There goes but number two. That's going to be Landon Sims as he pulls it out of Nettle's gut and takes it right up the middle. Still gains good yardage. It's going to be third down now, third down and seven. Cougars need a big play. They've been primarily doing everything on the ground with the exception of the pass play that got outside to, to Jadaniel Nettles early, and he was able to gain 10 yards on that reception and carry. But most of the yardage here in this first half have come on the legs of these Cougar offensive guys. There's Christian Crook in motion. But counterplay comes back. Jadaniel Nettles with a big spin move right there and battles for yardage. There's that spin move that we talked about that from time to time causes Jadaniel to lose the football, but he doesn't lose it there. Yeah, he picked up good yards. It's going to be fourth and about two. That really would have been a good play. You know, I mean, I'm glad Bubba got what he did, but I was looking at the open field. If that play would have been handed off to number three, Christian Crook, it's probably a touchdown. That fourth and short here. Cougars in the I formation. There's the snap. Handoff is going to be to Nettles. He's got running room still on his feet. Going to have enough for a first down. As he battles for yardage and gets enough as the ball goes inside the 20 all the way down to the 16-yard line. Cougar line did a really good job that time. I could see the hole from here. He ran right through it. Gained good yardage and first down. You know, the fine folks at Unity Baptist Church in Atmore, we feed those cougars every Thursday, so that's probably some of that good groceries probably that they had yesterday, having those linemen get up there. You know, you can tell that there's good food being served because all the linemen are always on the front row. Maybe I'll get an invite up there one of these, one of these Thursday nights. I need to you are welcome anytime, <laughs> sir. There's a pitch going to Jadaniel Bubba Nettles, going outside, spins out of a tackle. And uh, he finally gets knocked off his feet. He gained a few yards. There's, a, there's kind of the case we were talking about earlier. I'm not sure the spin move did him much good there. He just probably been better served to lower his head and just pile through for a couple more yards because he stopped his own momentum with the spin move. You know, I uh, not too long ago watching uh, some stuff on ESPN, I got a chance to watch something and I know you, you'll know what I'm talking about I watched a um, uh, one of those specials that ESPN does and it was on Earl Campbell and I remember just looking back on video the way Earl Campbell ran the football Sims with the football got a man open touchdown. in the end zone touchdown Cougars as the ball it looked like Malachi Haynes number oh. one how a penalty. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's going to be. Probably, I'm, I'm guessing that may be something to do with a celebration. Of course, the touchdown will count. Usually, those type penalties uh, either means a celebration, excessiveness, or uh, it could have been something said after the catch in the end zone. I'm not sure. Uh, but it in. does look like it's going to be against the Cougars. <laughs> Unsportsmanlike conduct. The yeah, touchdown's going to be good. It's going to be a dead ball, unsportsmanlike against the Cougars. And so they're asking now: Do you want to kick it? Uh, do you want to take it here? Or do you want to take it on the kickoff? And it looks like they're going to back them up and take it here, which. To be honest with you, it's not a bad move with three minutes, 18 seconds. I mean, this game, as close, nip and tuck as it is, this game could come down to an extra point. Yeah. It would be a long extra point. It be a 35-yard extra point. 
Well, he well, we've he, seen Landon kick him that far. So. Oh yeah, he's he's got that leg. Got to make sure we get good blocking, good snap. Cougar scored with 3:18 to go, and you know, to be honest with you. That penalty, and I'm sure the penalty was against Malachi Haynes for the celebration. That's something Malachi is just going to have to learn, that after you score a touchdown, you kind of got to act like you've scored one before and just give the ball to the referee right. and go on to the sideline. There's the snap. Kick is down. It's going to be up. And oh, it, hit the, the yeah, it hit the upright. No good. So the ball hit the upright. No good. So the Cougars are going to trail in the ball game now. 14 to 13. May have another penalty. Yep, it is going to be penalty flags. Let's see what that's going to be. Personal foul. And so Otaga kind of bites themselves right there, unfortunately, for them. Good deal for the Cougars, but uh, you've got 15 yard penalties going on, on a touchdown that cost you as a Cougar. And now you've got a 15-yard penalty on a missed extra point that cost you as a general. So both coaches have probably just broken their pencils. <laughs> point after is going to come again. Landon Sims with the ball. Spotted down. The kick is up. The kick is going to be good. And so after the penalty was assessed, the Cougars tie the game up by a score of 14 to 14 with 318 to go in the first half of this ball game. We're all knotted up. You're listening to Cougar football on WBZR at more, or you may be watching on Facebook or YouTube. Diamond gasoline stations with locations all over South Alabama and Northwest Florida, which all the local teams in the area Good luck this football season. Thank you for making Diamond Gasoline your choice for quality fuels and convenience items. Diamond Gasoline is proud to support this broadcast and be a part of the community. And remember, fill your tank and save your green at Diamond Gasoline. Whether selling or buying whole lots, land or commercial property in both Alabama and Florida. You need to see the fine folks at Southern Real Estate. Debbie Rao, owner and broker, and agent David Dobson are ready to assist you with any real estate needs. Located at 800 East Nashville Avenue in Atmore and at southernrealestate.org on the web, they are just a phone call away at 251-368-4397. Choosing the right realtor makes all of the difference. See Southern Real Estate. 3.18 to go here in the first half, 14 to 14 to score. Escambia Academy and Otaga Academy here in Prattville. Ball's teed up at the 40. High end over end kick. It's going to be fielded, Ooh. and I don't see a penalty flag, so he must have just caught it. Looked like number six, uh, Farrell Banks uh, caught that for the Generals, but he got hammered immediately. But it's still good field position for the Generals. It is good field position, but Six is going to rethink that catching the football there. He should have called a fair catch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to catch it with the ball that high, you might as well go ahead and fair catch it because that way nobody can come down the field and smoke you. 3.17 to go here in the first half, all knotted up at 14, Escambia Academy and Otaga Academy. Number one in the state, AISA. Against number two, the Cougars are number one, the Generals number two. There's the snap. Quarterback back, looking downfield, going to throw it. Got a man open, hits him over the middle. One missed tackle. Now he spins, and now he breaks the tackle, coming, running near side, still on his feet. And finally, number 11, Jadaniel Bubba Nettles, is able to get a hand around an ankle. Yeah, that was number 18 again, Jalen Anderson. To say he's shifty is definitely an understatement. He's hard to get a hold of. Yeah, and he's just a sophomore. They have maybe cramping. Yeah, he um he came up hobbled just a little bit. Quarterback still on his feet looking to throw. He's got people all over him. Yeah, I think they're gonna face mask on that one. I'm yeah. Afraid. And as a matter of fact, everybody that could have thrown the penalty flag on the face mask actually got rid of it, I think. 
we may have to take a radio timeout just to gather up the laundry. Face mask, personal foul, that's going to be against the Cougars. Penalty yardage is going to be enough for a first down. Nope. Well, no. That's an automatic. Is that an automatic first down? I think, yeah, possibly on the see personal foul, face mask against the Cougars. First and down. it is going to be a first down. It's an automatic first down because, Need yeah, they got they got to move cruise. the chains, chain. and they have not. Chain crew's got to move. Well, all right. So, so here's the deal. Was oh, that? Oh no, no, was that, you're right. It was first down anyway. Yeah, that's right. So they don't lose a down, but the penalty yardage just moves them forward. Yeah, that's right. But that run from number four. That's going to be Ligon, Carl Ligon, running back. Goes around left end. He's going to gain enough for a first down. So with 2.23 and counting here in the first half, Otago with the football, and they're driving. They're going to have to do something about that side of the field and over there. They've gained most of their yardage on that side where they're passing or running. And the only thing, like I said, the only thing I can attribute that to is that's just good downfield blocking from your receivers. Quarterback looking to throw. Nobody there. As it looked like somebody may have run the wrong route because no, instead of. Down to, in, the, in the area of holding, I don't know if that's what it's going to be. But. Well, the quarterback did have a lot of time to throw as he sat back there in the pocket for quite a, quite a while. It does look like they're going to talk to Cougar captains. Yeah, I'm sure it's a hold. And they're going to mark it all from the spot of the foul. Not so sure about the mark off because the white hat was showing him where the spot was. That was where the penalty flag laid, but he was a good yard and a half, two yards behind at the at the actual 30-yard yeah, line. I'm, I'm in total agreement with yeah, you. I mean, he marked it from the 30, but the flag was laying, and the, and the white hat pointed at it at the 32. Yeah, you're right. He didn't correct him, though. Okay. Well. So it's going to be... First down steal, and it looks like it's about first down. And Goodness. Penalty flags continue to fly. It's a five-yard mark off against the Cougars. Okay, now it's about first and 20. See, I can count to 20. Ten fingers, ten toes, I got that. But when you get beyond that, I'm... Sometimes I'm lost. There's quarterback's going to keep it. That's actually 18 on the carry as they direct snapped to number 18, Jalen Anderson. And Anderson tries to go left, but the Cougars do a good job there defending that. Yeah, no gain on that, so we suck at about 20. Clock running, a minute 34 to go here in the first half, tied up at 14. Otaga Academy with the football as they drive. They're in Cougar territory. Ball spotted at the 33-yard line. A lot of receivers go left. They've got uh, trips over there, a single wide out to the right side over here. A lot of pressure up the yep, middle. Yep, a lot of pressure right him. up the middle, and they got him and dropped him. As number 10, J.J. Stevens got in there. Clock is stopped with 106 to go here in the first half. Not sure why the clock is stopped. Oh, timeout by by uh, Otaga. So with a timeout on the field, we'll take a timeout as well. The score 14 to 14 here in the first half. 106 remaining. You're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR, or you may be watching on Facebook or YouTube. Creek Lumber is a family-owned and operated sawmill operation with locations in Uriah, Alabama and Blountstown, Florida. Juniper Creek Lumber specializes in turning storm recovery logs into custom-cut lumber for use in a variety of building projects. 
We have longleaf pine, juniper, white cedar, cypress, and hardwood. And who wouldn't love authentic heart pine beams or new heartwood flooring, custom cut to your need and specification? Check us out on Facebook or call Greg Fraley at 251 254 0414 or Cooper Dean at 251 362 8100. That's Greg Fraley at 251 254 0414 or Cooper Dean at 251 362 8100. For Juniper Creek Lumber, Southern Tech. I want to thank all our fine sponsors on Friday night that allow us to come do what we do to bring you football games on WBZR in Atmore. Also, on uh, you could be watching on Facebook or YouTube if you tune in to the video broadcast. And, of course, uh, you know, you can catch the broadcast anytime with a Facebook account. All you got to do is type in a Scambia Academy Cougar football and uh, in your um, however you search on Facebook or YouTube, and you can find us. Timeout by EA on that one. Yeah, Cougars are going to take a timeout as they, uh, with a minute six to go, they wanted to see how the generals were going to line up, and then they uh, are going to make adjustments defensively because they want to go in at halftime all knotted up. And, of course, the generals have been moving the football pretty well on the ground. And uh, so they've got to they've got to talk things over. A good job there, and the Cougars always do a good job, you know, um, especially at halftime, making halftime adjustments and coming out looking um, very good in the second half. And of course, we knew this was going to be a tough, hard-fought game from the beginning because you've got the number one and number two ranked teams uh, in the state of Alabama in AISA, and not only that, you've got these are two highly ranked. Class 2A teams in AISA that are in the same region. Right. So, I mean, you very well could get to the playoffs, and whoever wins or loses this ball game, chances are you make it far enough, you're going to see this bunch again. 106 to go here in the first half. Generals with the football. Ball spotted down at the. That's about third and 25, Ricky. Third and 25 from the Cougars' 39 yard line. Oh, drop. quarterback drops the ball, little pump fake, and that's going to be pa- pass yeah, that's going to be pass interference, and you could see that coming because you cannot extend an arm out and hold the receiver, and that's basically what was happening there. You got to run with him, you need to run with him, and then turn around and find the football. And Christian Crook is going to be the one that's guilty. Now, with that being said. Six seconds burned off the clock. You didn't give up a touchdown, and it's only a 15-yard penalty. So It is an automatic first down, though. I believe. Or, or maybe it's not. So let's see. There's yeah, the mark off. It's first down. No, they still have it as third. So it's third and about Yeah, 11. pass interference. Pass interference against the Cougars. And it is going to be third down. third down. So the down will stay the same. So it's about third down and 10. So you're right. Your point, he didn't give up the touchdown. And had he not interfered, he may have given up the touchdown. It yeah, because, well I, I mean, to be honest with you, it looked like uh, the, the receiver had a step or two on him. And, of course, Coach Carr here on the sideline for they're talking to 18. Of course, one goes far side, 18's to this side. Both of those are your primary receivers Comes and 10 looking to throw ball's going to be thrown behind the receiver in the middle incomplete. of the field and it's incomplete ball falls to the ground jj yeah. stevens was getting the rush on him there and he got rid of the ball quick good pressure by the cougars and caused the incomplete pass inside a minute 56.6 seconds left to go here before the half fourth down and 10 for the generals Coach Bobby Carr with his quarterback coming to near the numbers. And they're going to talk about what they're going to do, and it looks like they're going to maybe try a field goal from here. So it'll be a 41-yard attempt. And 
And it looks like there's going to be timeout called as they send the kicking team out. Side delay a game, maybe. No, they called timeout. The near side guy gave them the timeout. So 28, Sean Pierce, he's listed as a kicker. You know, when you're the guy that uh, you look down the um, roster and you only got a K by your name, then all he does is he kicks. So a kicking specialist is what 28 is, and uh, they're fixing to test him and see how special he is. Of course, you never know. Uh, They could have a little wrinkle that they've worked on that may be a two-point conversion play that they're saying, okay, let's try to catch the Cougars by surprise because they don't have to actually score. I mean, they can get 10 yards and get a first down. That's right. 56.6 56.6 seconds to go. They are lining up as if to kick it. Ball will be spotted at the 31. That'll make it a 41-yard attempt. Cougars on their safe defense, so they're not really going for the block. There's the ball. It's going to be kicked. It's going to be placed down. It's got distance, and it is good. So a 41-yard field goal kicked by number 28. That's going to be Sean Pierce, the kicker. And he just let everybody know that he is a kicker. Yep, he nailed that one. That was a good kick. That is a good That is a good high school football um, field goal right there from 41 yards out. So that's going to run the score now to Otago is going to have a 17-14 to 14 lead, and the Cougars are going to get the football back with less than a minute to go here in the first half. So that's just good football right there. You know, and the thing is, is that that Coach Carr had the confidence. He sent him out there, and uh, he showed him, uh, you know, Pierce showed him. He said, okay, Coach, you got confidence in me. I'm going to show you why you should. And he kicked a 41-yard field goal. So that was a good job there by the Otaga Generals. And that, little things like that, Rick, can win you football games. Yeah. I mean, that was (laughs) – Nothing you can say about that except outstanding kick, good, good, uh, good blocking by a target, and uh, and and it was still good defense by EA to keep them out of the end zone as far as the touchdown goes. But uh, uh, well, yeah, I mean, game. I mean, the, you know, the thing is, and is EA is, does get the ball to start right, the second. They half. get the ball to start the second half, and when you think about that, on that particular possession, the general scored only three points on the possession. You're one possession away from getting the ball and scoring and getting the lead. There's the ball going to be handed up uh, up by number two. That's going to be Landon Sims. Sims with running room still on his feet, carrying tacklers down inside the 20, inside the 25-yard line, and he's going to be marked down right at the 25. Boy, a Tiger couldn't have kicked it to a worse person. <laughs> Landon was the worst person they could have kicked it to. And still plenty of time in the half. Now there is. Uh, uh, how many timeouts does EA have? Do they have any? Well, I to be honest with you, I, I can't tell from the scoreboard. It does look like possibly they have at least one. Well, let's see what happens. Wow. Well, they got to hurry up and get the playoff because we're inside 10 seconds to go on the play clock. Somebody's got to say snap the football. Hurry up and snap it. There's the snap. Sims rolling to his right. He's going to be handled by the defensive end, and that is probably going to end any opportunity for you to score. And, you know, the thing is is that Landon Sims just kept kind of drifting, drifting, drifting as he's rolling to his right. If he would have stepped up, in the pocket and let his tackle to that side get that defensive end out around him. Well, they did have one timeout, so. So still time on the clock. But if, but they, if they could get down there far enough and spike the ball, they, could have enough, they would have enough time, really, to get their field goal unit out there and try. Right. I mean, there is enough time. And there's also probably, um, or certainly I've seen them enough, uh, over the last couple of years, there's probably enough riverboat gambler on that sideline over there. They're not thinking field goal right now. They're wanting to score. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Roughly but, uh, 30 seconds left, so. 
and and in getting back to that previous play, I'm not saying that Landon Sims did anything wrong. He didn't. He was supposed to be rolling to his right. What? What, what was really good was good defense by the generals because that defensive end to that side never let his outside shoulder get attacked. He was able to keep uh, he kept his outside shoulder free and he just kept drifting he did with Landon. We know Landon will take off and run with it. That's side. right. He he did a good job of setting the edge out there with his outside shoulder free. He just drifted with him and when Landon got too cro close, he reached out and grabbed him and took him down. Cougars have some uh, they've got a little time here so I'm just not sure on the timeouts but Second down and 25 is what they're showing. The ball all the way back at the 41-yard line. There's going to be a little flare out of the backfield. Good tackle there, open field by number 18. And 18's been all over the place tonight. He's had a good first half. That's going to be Jalen Anderson. That'll close the half. Yeah, I think the Cougars are out of timeout, and they're not going to have time to get lined up and do anything. Four... Three, two. Well, they do get a playoff, and that's going to be incomplete with zeros on the clock. So that's going to end the first half. The score at the half, Otoga Academy 17, Escambia Academy 14. We'll be back, and we'll talk about the first half and try to get ourselves into a second half of a very good football game here in Prattville. You're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR 105.9 FM in Atmore or you may be list or watching on Facebook or YouTube. Barra Fine Furniture in Plumberton, also with locations in Pensacola, Mobile, Dothan, and Andalusia, your one-stop shopping experience. We carry over 50 different brands, including Flex Steel, Brassmaster, Bassett, Rowe, Ashley, Catnapper, and many more. Come see our sleep gallery for a great night's sleep. You can pick out the mattress that best fits your comfort level. See it today, take it today, or you can stuff some more. Come visit us, store hours, 9 to 5 on Monday through Friday, 9 to 2 on Saturday. Five year sales of East Bruton, Alabama says try our inventory out for mobile homes. Check their starting prices, their best around, and they install. They have floor vents, brown and white, four by eight, five, four dollars and twenty five cents, four by ten, four ninety five. Buy one, get one free. Window screens for mobile homes, they make them to size. They have tubs, doors, windows, boxes, bathrooms, and sinks. Light fixtures, plumbing, AC duct, furnace vanity, cool seal, step, and kitchen sinks as well. Just about anything to do with a mobile home, they have it at Pioneer Sales in East Bruton. Give them a call today. Hey. Second grade, 
grade, Patty Wood. Third grade, Dante Taylor. Fifth grade, Harper Turner. Fifth grade, Bella Holman. Fifth grade, Jasmine Robertson. And fifth grade, Aubrey Carter. At this time, I would like to introduce our 2021 varsity cheerleaders. Senior Captain Lexi Robbins, AIS and All-Star UCA All-American. Senior Captain Lainey Armstrong. Senior Holly Walter, AIS and All-Star and UCA All-American. Senior Kayla McBride, UCA All-Star. Senior, Shay Stevens. Senior, Michelle Sanders. Junior, Catherine Hughes. And Junior, Tanner Jones. to be able to play consistent football on either offense or defense. Now the defense, I think, is a little bit ahead right now, the offense, but the, the offense at times looks really good, and then at other times it just kind of, right now, it just seems to kind of spit and sputter just a little bit. Well, I think you're spot on with that. I think, uh, uh, and I mean, really, you could say that about our target too. A lot of their big plays were kind of busted plays. Uh, uh, and uh, the defenses are both playing pretty well. Uh, EA's got to do something on the weak side a little bit. That's where Otago's gained the most of their yardage with that little little power sweep is really all it is. But so you, they're getting great downfield blocking by the receivers and or whoever they've got split out on that end. And once number four, Ligon, gets his, his shoulders turned north or south, he, he, he can motor. And, yeah. uh, then they got burned one time by that number 18. And uh, other than that, they play pretty good defense. And like I said, it's a kind of a – a game of possessions right now and who makes the best adjustments. Yeah, 18s are, I mean, he's a really good, you know, really good player. Uh, and um, and so, you know, good players on both sides of the football. I mean, you, you're looking at a game where the number one and number two ranked teams are playing in the state, you know, and uh, so you expected this kind of football game for it to be nip and tuck. To be quite honest with you, it could really boil down to, being whoever has the football last is going to be the winner of the football game. That so. possession battle, like we were talking about. Let's talk about some other things while we've got time here at halftime and tell you about some other uh, games that we've got going on. Of course, uh, if we look at teams 
in the AISA this week. Pike Liberal Arts um, last week defeated Tuscaloosa Academy. They do not play tonight. You've got Lee Scott Academy. They're up against, uh, they're at Valiant uh, Cross Academy. Glenwood School is at Hooper Academy tonight. You know, we passed Hooper on the way up here and talked about them just a little bit. There's a Valiant Cross at Lee Scott again. And Hooper Academy, of course, they will be taking on Glenwood, as we've already said. In uh, other games that we've got uh, going on here, that is in uh, Class 3A. As we continue Class 3A tonight, Tuscaloosa Academy, they're at Clark. Uh, they're playing Clark Prep. They're not at Clark Prep. They're playing Clark, Clark Prep. We've got Morgan Academy. Them and Bessemer Academy are tying it up tonight. Monroe Academy, the folks from up in Monroe, well, they're at Fort Dale tonight. Bessemer Academy is at Morgan Academy. There again, Clark Prep at Tuscaloosa. And uh, there's the Fort Dale Academy game at uh, Monroe Academy. Or no, I'm sorry, Monroe is on, on the road. In Class 2A, this is in the, uh, the other region. This is in Class 2A Region 1. Chambers Academy did not play last week. They play Edgewood tonight. Macon East Academy defeated uh, Jackson Academy last week. They play Banks Academy this week. Edgewood Academy there again. Uh, they're at Chambers. Uh, Springwood did not play last week. They're at Cornerstone Christian tonight. And uh, those are your games in Class 2A uh, Region 1. In our region here with the Scambia Academy, the Scambia Academy is at, here at Alga, Otaga Academy tonight uh, after defeating uh, Chipley, Florida last week by a score of 22-7. to Otaga Academy, they were down in Florida too in um, Quincy, Florida. They played RF Monroe uh, High School last week. They defeated them 21-12. to Wilcox Academy defeated Snook last week, and they do not play tonight. They're off. You got Southern Academy. They're at Patrician, and uh, or actually Patrician, I'm sorry, is at Southern tonight. They'll be playing uh, that game, and we'll try to get you scores later. Let me remind you that if you're looking for a scoreboard show to listen into, that on your way home tonight from wherever you may be right now, you can tune in to WPFL, 105.1 FM in Flomaton. And uh, my buddy Paul McVeigh, he has all the scores that are uh, pertinent. The state. Yeah, all, all the scores from around everywhere. So, And, and if, you, if you miss a score, then dial him up. He'll be glad to look it up. He's got a computer right there, and, and he'll look it up for you. Or we get one wrong. Sometimes you get a score wrong, and, and if we get one wrong, it's good to call him up and let him know. That's true. Yep. That is true. I got an opportunity a couple of weeks ago to work that uh, scoreboard show. Had a great time down there. I tell you, got a good response, and people down there, they really like listening. You know, folks in our area down there close to home, they love their high school football on Friday night, so you're looking for all the scores that you can tune into. Let's wrap this up uh, for games that are being played tonight in other places. As uh, in uh, AISA Class A in Region 1, Crenshaw Academy is off tonight. You got Lowndes Academy there at Lakeside. Coosa Valley Academy is at Abbeville Christian. And so that's all your games from Class A Region 1. Class A Region 2, Sparta Academy. You know, EA was supposed to play Sparta Academy last week, but Sparta did not play last week. They play at South Choctaw Academy tonight. Jackson Academy is at Pickens Academy. And Snook Christian is at Meadowview Christian. And so there you have your games from Region 2, from Class A Region 2 in the Alabama Independent School Association around the state. About getting ready to get this thing started back as we'll have a second half coming to you from Prattville, Alabama, home of the Otago Academy Generals. Otago leading in the ball game by a score of 17-14. to 14. The Cougars will get the football when we come back and get started here for the second half. It's a good one. So uh, I'm going to quote, uh, got to quote Lane Kiffin. Get you some popcorn, you some popcorn and popcorn. tune in for the second half. Yeah. So there you go, Lane. I get to use your line. Come back and be with us in the second half. You're listening to Escambia Academy Cougar Football on WBZR at more, or you may be watching on Facebook or YouTube.
I like extra butter on mine. Policy comes from us. It comes with something extra. A real person. Don't buy from an insurance company with an 800 number and a voicemail menu. Auto owners insurance operates exclusively through local independent agencies here to help you 24-7. Now that's good policy. Please Larry White Insurance Agency at 430 Palafox Street in Fulton or call 296-2471. Why buy at Johnson's Hole? We put our customers' wants and needs first. We respect your time and offer a stress-free approach to selling cars. This is reflected in our winning Ford President Award five years consecutively. From sales to service, we do everything we can to achieve the highest level of customer service. We are proud to be the premier Ford dealership in this area. We invite you to come by and see us at 1828 South Main Street in Atmore. To experience the no best price, first way of doing business. Stop by and see Jim Johnson and the staff or give them a call. 251-368-2135. Diamond Gasoline Station with locations all over South Alabama and Northwest Florida, which all the local teams in the area good luck this football season. Thank you for making Diamond Gasoline your choice for quality fuels and convenient items. Diamond Gasoline is proud to support this broadcast and be a part of the community. And remember, fill your tank and save your green at Diamond Gasoline. Whether selling or buying homes, lots, land, or commercial property in both Alabama and Florida, you need to see the fine folks at Southern Real Estate. Debbie Rao, owner and broker, and agent David Dobson are ready to assist you with any real estate needs. Located at 800 East Nashville Avenue in Atmore and at southernrealestate.org on the web, they are just a phone call away at 251-368-4397. Choosing the right realtor makes all of the difference. See Southern Real Estate. Juniper Creek Lumber is a family-owned and operated sawmill operation with locations in Uri, Alabama and Blunttown, Florida. Juniper Creek Lumber specializes in turning storm recovery logs into custom-cut lumber for use in a variety of building projects. We have longleaf pine, juniper, white cedar, cypress, and hardwood. And who wouldn't love authentic heart pine beams or new heartwood flooring custom-cut to your need and specification? Check us out on Facebook or call Greg Fralick at 251-254-0414 or Cooper Dean at 251-362-8100. That's Greg Fralick at 251-254-0414 or Cooper Dean at 251-362-8100. For Juniper Creek Lumber, Southern Bend. Barra Fine Furniture in Plumerton, also with locations in Pensacola, Mobile, Dothan, and Anastasia, your one-stop shopping experience. We carry over 50 different brands, including Flex Steel, Brassmaster, Bassett, Rowe, Ashman, Cat Napper, and many more. Come see our sleep gallery for a great night's sleep. You can pick out the mattress that best fits your comfort level. See it today, take it today, or you can just order. Come visit us, store hours, 9 to 5 on Monday through Friday, 9 to 2 on Saturday. Pioneer Sales of East Bruton, Alabama, can try our inventory out for mobile homes. Check their starting price. They're best around, and they install. They have four of these, brown and white, four by eight, five, four dollars and twenty-five cents, four by ten, four ninety-five. Buy one, get one free. With a screen for mobile homes, they make them to size. They have tubs, doors, windows, box, bathrooms, and sinks. Light fixtures, plumbing, AC duct, furnace vanity, cool seal, step, and kitchen sinks as well. Just about anything to do with a mobile home, they have it at Pioneer Sales in East Bruton. Give them a call today, 867-8507. Good evening. This is Greg Albright, your state senator. It's great to be back under the lights of Friday night football. It's been a long time since I was a player under the same lights, but I haven't forgotten the hard work, determination, and teamwork it takes to finish the game with a victory. As your senator, I use these same principles in Montgomery as we compete with other areas of the state for the resources we need. It is my job to see that Escambia County comes out a winner. Atmore Auto Parts, located at 105 North 2nd Avenue in Atmore, is your local Napa dealer, specializing in automotive parts. 
farm and agricultural parts, ATV and heavy-duty parts, marine and hydraulic hoses. Apple Auto Parts is open Monday through Friday from 7 to 5 and on Saturday 7 to 12. No one knows parts better than the folks at Atmore Auto Parts. And for your next project, call Atmore Auto Parts at 251-368-2148. And welcome back. 12 minutes on the clock as we get set for the third quarter here in Prattville between Otaga Academy and Escambia Academy. EA will get the football. They'll uh, be defending to your right if you're looking at your radio. So... Uh, Otago will be kicking to the Cougars. They have the ball teed up at the 40-yard line. And the kicker, Sean Pierce, who kicked the 41-yard field goal in the second quarter of the ball game, he kicks it off and he bangs it. Oh, through the end zone. So he's showing off a little bit as Mr. Pierce tonight. He's saying, hey, guys, I'm a kicker. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean, he kicked that one right through the end zone. So it's not not very many times when a kicker can kick the football and turn toward the crowd and do a double bicep and get an applause <laughs> from it. You know what I mean? You don't normally see uh, that kind of kicking in any high school game. I mean, that's uh, he's really kicking well. So he bowed up and kicked that one. Kicked it slam out of the stadium. First down and 10 for the Cougars as we start the second half of the ball game. Third quarter, 12 minutes still on the clock. The ball spotted at the EA 20-yard line. Wide receiver split wide to each side. Landon Sims, the quarterback. Handoff is going to be to number 11. That's to Daniel Bubba Nettles looking for yardage. He's going to be fought and thrown backwards finally. May gain a little bit of yardage, but not very much. About a yard. Hard run, ran hard, just, just wasn't there on that one. Second down and nine for the Cougars. Glad to have you folks with us. Sorry, you know, earlier in the game we had some technical stuff, but that just goes with trying to put on a live broadcast, and I believe we've got everything figured out now. We seem to be rolling pretty good. Knock on wood. Cougars with the football, man in motion. There's the handoff. Now cutting back. Good yardage there after the cutback for number 11, Jadaniel Bubba Nettles. As he put his head down and went north and south, he's going to gain about three yards on the carry. It's going to be a third down, though, third down and six. Clock running 10-51 and counting here in the third quarter. Cougars with the football. They look to the sideline to get the play. They've got trips receivers way far the other way over there. They got three people in a stack. Tight end to the left. Landon Sims coming near side. He's going to battle for yardage, but was unable to get the ball outside. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Yeah, we're going to be out fourth and two. I'm sure they'll punt right here. Yeah, they. I would think that Lane you got to punt Lane would go for it, but. Four times in a row. <laughs> I, I think he hates going for it, too. Cougars leave the offense on the field. They're looking to draw somebody offside, and they do. Wow. Good job, Coach. Good job, Landon. Landon did a good job there, and the Cougars did a good – you know, I mean, you got to understand, these I mean, are high school really football players. Right yeah. yeah, these are high school football players, and to hold your water – Right there, when your quarterback's jumping around, clapping his hands, and you're used to going on that hand clap snap, and for you to be able to not move and the defense does move, that's a good job by the Cougars. First down and 10 after the penalty. And let's see, that's going to be uh, number three, I believe, Christian Crook with the football. Landon Sims and Christian Crook looked like they were fighting over the football because I think Sims, after Crook got wrapped up, Sims was trying to pull it. Yeah, it was a little RPO that uh, he was trying to run there, but he did wind up giving it to Christian on that one. I think Christian might have just took it away from him <laughs> said, here. <laughs> he called the RPO. That's right. Play does gain a yard. It's going to be second down and nine. Ball spotted across the 30 out to near the 35. It's at the 34. 
Snap. Handoff is going to be right up the middle. Number 11, Bubba Nettles on the carry. He battles for yardage across the 40. Looks like it's going to be spotted near the 41. Good yardage on that carry. Actually, they do move it back just a smidge. Move it back more than a smidge, man. They put it back at the 40. <laughs> Third down and three for the Cougars. Ball at the 40. And there's a penalty flag as it looks like the Generals no. jump off sides again. These coaches have taught that this line judging over here into calling that against the Cougars. That was against that was against the Generals, and this, this referee right here just got talked into that by these coaches. Well, you know, you can't blame the coaches. That's their job. Yeah. And I, I didn't see anything on the Cougars. I certainly didn't. I saw I saw the big defensive tackle jump into the neutral zone. But you're right. You know, I, I mean, I've been where he's <laughs> standing yeah. before. You hear. Can't do that, guys. I'm not sure what they got going on. But, you know, we talked about things at the halftime about little wrinkles that may have been put in. And. Uh, those, those, those are bad wrinkles there. Yeah. They had too many people in motion. I was just thinking yeah. when I said the word wrinkles, that's wrinkles so bad you can't even wear it. You know what I mean? <laughs> So anyway, the Cougars got to figure things out. That penalty yardage backs the ball all the way back. It's going to be third down and about 13 yards to go. The ball spotted now at the 30. They've got to come all the way out to the 43 for a first down. Trips receivers right. Wide receiver hit set to the left. Sims looking. Got plenty of time. You got to get rid of it, but he's not going to get rid of it and be dropped. You can't just sit back there and hold the football. You either got to throw it or throw it away. Good coverage there by Otaga as they had every receiver downfield covered up. Fourth down and a bunch. Of course, it's, it it's, could have taken off run, but it's better to take the sight than to, to, as they say, throw late across the middle or do something like that and throw an interception. They used to got a chance for a good, good punt here. Good defense there by Otaga. Otaga's going to get the football back. Landon Sims back deep to punt. There's the snap. Oh. That punt was almost blocked. Oh, man. And that was a good punt as that little Australian-style punt got the ball end over end and rolling. And the ball ends up going all the way into Otaga territory. It'll be spotted down right near the 30-yard line where so, they'll take over first down and 10. So a lot we were talking about him taking the sack. Of course, you don't want to take a sack, and you don't want to throw throw late, you know, and make a mistake and throw an interception and give him the ball at the 50. And they made the, he took the sack, but then he got a good good punt out of it. And uh, now they've, he's, you know, they've got decent field position, but they swapped into the fields basically. And you know the thing, uh, you know, we've talked about this a bunch before, you know, following as much football as we do. As Bear Bryant always said, you know, when you're throwing the football, three things can happen, and two, two of them, them ain't good. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so you might as well go ahead and eat it right there. And they probably did better just by punting the ball away, and now you got to play defense. 7.04 remaining. We're almost halfway through this third quarter. So the Cougars did a good job there eating up about five minutes of the third quarter. They just didn't score. But they did change field position. There's a little pitch coming near side, four with the ball. He's got speed. He makes a man miss, and he's going to be on the sideline, and he's got running room. Cutting back inside and finally knocked off his feet is number four. That's going to be Carl. Ligon. Ligon, yes. Ligon gets the ball all the way down into deep Cougar territory. As the ball goes, trying to go with a quick count. Inside the 25, down to about the 24. There's the snap. Hand off is to four again. Why not give it to him? Keep giving it to him till somebody stops him. Good job there on defense by the Cougars. And number four, Ligon is definitely the workhorse of this offense right now.
looking far side for the down marker. And okay, they finally pick it up. Second down. It's going to be second down. It looks like they give him a gain of a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Otago breaks the huddle. Wide out split wide to the right. Wide receiver, wide left. Here he comes in motion. Now they're going to go back the other way with it. It's a little, oh, oh they and they were trying to run an end around. They were running a reverse a is basically reverse, what it was. Essentially what they were trying to run, but they fumbled the ball. And to be honest with you, I mean, if the play would have been pulled off, it probably would have worked pretty good. But, you know, I, I mean – really where Otago has been and, and the way they've been playing, you really don't have to do anything cute. I mean, they, that was just one of those little cutesy plays that almost came back and bit them. Third down, 14 yards to go for Otago. I guess we can say they are in field goal range, though. Quarterback looking downfield, looking to throw, going deep. And it's going to be overthrown. Good defense down there by the safety. That's going to be Landon Sims. The well, intended receiver, receiver was number eight. That's James Wright. <laughs> what do you think they'll do here? I mean, he's kicked a 41-yarder that would have went from 46 to 47. So. Right. Well, I mean. There he goes. Yep. They're saying, why not? Let's kick it again. So from where the line of scrimmage is, it's going to be at the 20. 28, about the 20. 45-yard field goal. Yeah, it'll be a 45. He kicked a 41. And as you said earlier, it had the distance. There's the snap. Kick his place down. I don't think that one's going to get there. Nope. That no, that's going to be wide left and no good. So the Cougars are going to take the football over right there at the line of scrimmage. So 4.56 to go here. In the third quarter, Cougars trailing in the ball game by a score of 17-14. Well, good defensive stand by the uh, Cougars right there. I mean, uh, I know the guy can kick a field goal that long. Uh, so, overall, just good defense right there at the end. Well, he was just going to be a little bit short on that one. I don't think it quite had enough leg and nah. it didn't have the accuracy as it just kind of – it kind of fluttered like a like a dove to the left there just a little bit. And if I was sitting in on my dove bucket on a Saturday afternoon, no matter how it fluttered, I'd have still missed it. <laughs> Things are hard to hit. I usually grin at mine. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the joke. You, you ugly them down. <laughs> Trying to tear them up too bad. <laughs> Uh oh. Up. Oh, yep, yeah, there's going to be a penalty flag. I'm not sure who or what, but a late penalty flag gets thrown. Y'all sitting. Yep. Yeah. Just hope that there's not anything involved like a silly ejection or something like that. That's a dead ball, unsportsmanlike against one team and against the other team. They'll offset. Of course, Landon Sims has to go out because his helmet came off. Getting a little chippy in Prattville. Fours are wild on the scoreboard. Yep. Give me all your fours. Go fish. Which you're going to be doing tomorrow, by the way. Yeah, I will be. Hopefully. Okay for me to say where I'm going? I don't care. Going to Silcox Ponds. Good way, Alabama. Surely, they, surely the folks out there at Silcox will appreciate it. 444 to go here in the third quarter. Cougars with the football. Second down and six. Landon Sims, the quarterback for the Cougars, is on the sideline. Direct snap going to be back to the running back. That's number 11, Jadaniel Bubba Nettles. Nettles takes the snap, goes forward. He's going to gain a couple. It's going to bring up third down now, third down and two. 
Now Landon Sims will come back on after sitting out his one play for losing his helmet. And let's hope that somebody calmed him down a little bit while he was over there. We don't need a, we don't need another unsportsmanlike penalty and endangering our quarterback from getting set on the sideline for the remainder of the game. Handoff is going to be up the middle. I believe he got the first down. Well, let's hope so. The ball comes out of the pile, and somebody's running with it, but no, it's not going to be a touchdown. They've already blown it down. Are they going to give them a touchdown? I don't think so. I think the officials are all talking about it right there, and if they were going to... I heard a whistle. Yeah, the, yeah, the whistle had already blown. I mean, you can't have, you can't have advancement of a football. Now they could have given him the, they may give him a fumble recovery, but you can't give him a football after the whistle's blown on the pile. They're going to talk it over. Yeah, nobody was even chasing him, and nobody was chasing him because the whistle had blown. A lot of talk, and this should be easy. Where's that popcorn at? Yeah, there's, uh, they're still talking about it far sideline, but there's, uh, I mean, I, I would really, this is going to be one of those calls that go down as being kind of like a, a travesty of the game type call either way. I mean, Autogas coaching staff, they were signaling touchdown because their guy came out of the pile with the football and was running unabated down the field, but the whistle had clearly blown. And they're still talking about it. It looks like they're going to, well, nobody's done anything. Usually this is bad news for the home team because whenever he's coming here, he's not wanting to give this news. This is kind of like one of those things when you're coming to the sidelines to say, you know that kid that you love so much? Well, he called me from jail, and you need to get bond money up and go get him. <laughs> that's going to be that kind of, you know, that's going to be that kind of conversation. Yeah, Coach Carr's <laughs> he's not going to be happy with yeah. that. So anyway, they're. I think it's going to remain Cougar ball. I, I think so too because they would have already. Once a whistle blows you, just because somebody, I mean, you could pick up a football on the sideline and run for a touchdown. I mean, if you're going to allow a play after the whistle blows, so I mean, yeah. Whistle a, blow, the ball was dead. And I mean, here's the, here's the thing. I mean, I've officiated a bunch of years, and you know, whenever you make a call like this. The white hat comes over. He's got to give the news that he doesn't want to give. And all you can do is sit there and eat that tail chewing that you're fixing to get. You, you're going to get one, and there ain't nothing you can do but grin and just take it and go back out there and, and he you looks, know. He looks like he might be missing a few tail feathers. That's, but, but that's exactly what he did, and it is going to be they're going to signal fourth down. So it's going to be fourth down. It was third down. It's going to be fourth down and one for the Cougars. What do you do here, Rick? Went for it earlier. Yeah, I don't, in a three-point game, I'm punting the football, but that's just me. Fourth down and one. Cougars offense on the field. They're going to break the huddle. Dutton, there's the snap. It's going to be a quarterback sneak. Everybody comes forward, and I believe it's going to be enough for a first down. I do, too. I tell you, that still takes a lot of guts because anything can happen. The ball can squirt out of there. The quarterback with the dew on the field and stuff like that, he can slip down. Definitely a first down. But it is going to be a first down, even though nobody's marked it. The white hat usually makes That's that call. Down. He'll step up in there and signal full. Well, the white hat's back there. Yeah, he's still game. he's still recovering from having to make that conversation <laughs> happen over here. He's still worried about those tail feathers. Cougars with the football, clock running 3:23. Jadaniel Nettles with the football as he comes over left tackle, puts his head down. He's going to gain about four yards, and it'll be second down and six. This game is moving around, uh, moving along at a pretty good clip because it's basically all running. 
it's all ground game on the offensive side of the ball for both teams. Man, they've literally got everybody inside the tight ends right now. <laughs> Cougars from a power set. Here comes Nettles. Nettles steps out around everybody. And let's see, he's going to be down the field. There's going to be a flag down on the play. And let's see what that flag is. It's going to be in the area where it's holding. Holding or blocking the back. Yeah, it's probably going to be a hold, and I think it's going to be a hold. Yeah, it's going to be a hold on a wide receiver because on the near side, and there again, I'm going to tell you, and I, I don't know. I didn't see the hold. I'm not saying it was or it wasn't. But this guy over here is going to be hearing every call that he doesn't see, he's going to hear about from the home sideline. And that's just the problem with, with being on the sideline. That's why I was so happy. Remember, I told you the story of me getting moved to umpire right. in the middle of the field when I was a referee. The farther I could get away from the coaches on the sideline, the better I liked it. It'll be second and eight. So Cougars with the football, second down and eight. There's the snap. Sims looking to throw. He's got to do something. You got to throw the football. And he oh. fell down. Good. The, the defensive backs for Otago cover probably better than any high school de group of defense. I mean, group of defensive backs that I've seen in a yeah, long there time. There was nobody open. I mean, there was. But he, in that case, you know. So that brings up a third down and 14. And. Sims was looking. He had his eyes downfield looking, yeah. but there was just nobody to throw the football nobody. to. He, he looked to every receiver he had. He just he just didn't have anybody. And it was actually good. It was actually good protection by the Cougars' offensive line. But you can't hold guys out that long. It's going to be a dead ball. The dead ball penalty against the Cougars. I didn't really see what was. I think it's delay a game. May have been delay a game. So that's going to back them up five more yards, and the wheels right now are coming off the Cougars' wagon. <laughs> that's a. That's going to be a lateral. He called it incomplete, but it, it didn't yeah, look that, like yeah, a lateral. Yeah, yeah, that was a lateral. That was an inadvertent whistle right there. Is But it's probably good for the Cougars that it was because somebody could have got on that football and took it into the end zone. I don't think there's any doubt it was lateral, but that that the, the umpire with the white hat waved his hands incomplete. All right, now, yeah, they, well, the chain crew over there, they've, they've boo-booed now. And the chains have broke because they there's only supposed to be 10 yards between those two chains, and there's about 30. So they got to fix those. The chain crew shouldn't have moved. I don't blame them for running down there, though. You get a better look at the play if you run down there. It's just not what you're supposed to do. But that's okay. That's our guys over there on that chain. <laughs> oh, no. Let's see what the, yeah, they're trying to respot. They're trying, they, they've got to decide where they were, where the line of scrimmage was. There they go. Now, they're not far enough yet. They still got to get it on back. All they got to do is look at the scoreboard, really, because they say where the ball was. That's close enough. White Hat's telling them, don't move <laughs> until we tell you to. A minute 34 to go here in the third quarter. Cougars are going to have to punt the football. Landon Sims back to do the punting for the Cougars. Came close to blocking it last time, and here they come. Kick is away. Good punt. Going to try to field it. It gets by the back trying to receive the ball. Now he picks it up on the bounce. He's still on his feet and finally gets knocked off his feet at about the 43-yard line. That's where Otago will take over first down and 10. Another outstanding punt. Good coverage. 
I'll tell you, a lot of interesting things have happened here in just this last little bit. We got all kind of stuff going on. We got chain crews moving when they shouldn't. <laughs> Breaking the chain. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you know, you pull those things hard enough in opposite direction, directions, they'll break. First down and 10, Otaga, the ball spotted uh, out near the 40-yard line. It'll be in general's territory. Cougars on defense. They need a stop. They need uh, they need somebody to fumble the football. There's that little pitch coming out here to number four. Four with some running room and a good tackle there, but it looks like he's going to have enough for a first down as that's going to be Carl Ligon coming with the football out to near the 50. It is going to be enough for a first down. So it'll be first down and 10 for the Generals. Just need to settle down some on defense. They've played a good defensive game overall. I see a little bit of frustration out there now. I just need to settle down, contain, put some pressure on that quarterback. Well, you're still only down by three points. There goes number four again. He's going around lefty and still on his feet. Got running room. Finally going to be tackled and knocked down at about the 45-yard line after a gain of five. Clock running inside a minute, 45 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Clock still running, 33, 32 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Otago with the football, first, or actually second down and five. The ball spotted at the Cougar, 45. Slot to the left. Uh. And let's see, no flag on the play as it looked like uh, Stevens, sure, J.J. Stevens. Outside. Well, <laughs> I thought so too, but nobody, I think it shocked everybody and nobody threw a flag or blew a whistle. I guess he could. Maybe timed it exactly right. I mean, he was coming. There's no doubt about it. J.J. Stevens came from his linebacker spot with his ears laid back, and that's the end of the third quarter. We got one more to play, and this one's been entertaining. The score at the end of three, Otaga Academy 17, Escambia Academy 14. We'll be back. You're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR at more, or you could be watching on Facebook or YouTube. One thing is for sure, everywhere you go, you'll find people who take pride in this. Indoors, outdoors, they're always working on something. At your local age, we proud to play our part in the communities we serve. We want you to know that whatever projects you're planning, whether they're big or small, will be there. Have a question? Send an ask. Our associates will be glad to help. They'll show you everything you'll need to get started. Give you friendly tips and expert advice in getting great help. Helpful ways to help you save time and money. Painting the rooms that we cover. Getting the lawn just right. From changing porch light to hanging pictures on the wall. If you need help, your local apes be just minutes away. Stop by today. Ace, the help of space. Steve Andre Lumber and Hardware with locations in Bruton, Century, and Dashmore. Welcome back as we get set for the fourth and final quarter of this football game. It's been a good one, 17 to 14 the score. The Otaga Academy Generals leading the Escambia Academy Cougars. Otaga with the football, third down and five. Ball going to be spotted at the Cougar 45-yard line. Wide receivers split wide to the left. And one also to the right. Actually a slot here left. Man's going to be in motion for Otaga. There's a direct snap. He did not get it, I don't believe. It's going to be fourth down about a yard or two. Yeah, the ball's going to be spotted at the 42-yard line. Looks like going to be about two yards to go for a first. Ah. And there the Cougars, J.J. Stevens. Of course, he's coming on a blitz and got in there in the neutral zone and cost his team five yards. It'll be first down now for the Otago Generals, and that's going to keep the drive moving and alive. Clock running 
11.36 to go in the football game. Otago with the, with the lead, 17 to 14. There's the snap. Handoff is going to be to four. Ligon following his big lineman. He's got running room, driving for yardage inside the 30, down to about the 25-yard line. This kid runs hard. He runs hard and he gets good blocking. He, he, he gets both. Well, something he did right there is he had a pulling lineman out yeah. in front of him, and he just put his hand on, on his, his back yeah. and just followed, followed him, him through the hole. 11 minutes to go in the ball game. There's four again looking for running room. That's going to be number four, Carl Ligon, the running back, 5'10", 175 pounds. He's a senior, and he's a good one. As he battles for yardage. Play is going to gain only a yard. It'll be second down and nine. Ten twenty-eight and counting here in the fourth quarter of this ball game. Cougars trailing 17-14. Otago with the football. Shotgun. Here comes the snap. Going to be a little pitch. Going to be to four. They set the edge. And a diving tackle made there. It looks like number 60 Nick for King. the Cougars. Yep. And he may be coming up a little slow as he fell hard on his shoulder. A nice tackle, though. If he didn't make the tackle, he could. I mean, that would have been. I mean, he definitely would have gained more yards. I don't know whether he would have, would have scored or not. But Nick Kane made a good Good play on that for sure. Third down and five. The ball is going to be at the 21-yard line. Slot to the right. Handoff is to, going to be to Ligon. Ligon looking for yardage. He's following his blocker. Penalty flag is thrown. That's going to be in an area where it's probably going to be holding. That was the white hat. So that's usually what it is. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be holding against a Tauga. So that's going to be a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. So instead of being third and five, wow. about third and yeah, seventeen or so. Now I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that mark off, and the reason I'm saying that is, is because. Yeah. Well, I, no, I, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm looking different. I looked where the running back ended up, but where the flag was laying, yeah, that's probably about ten yards, as it came back from where the spot that the flag was laying on the ground. Probably about third and seventeen or eighteen. Penalty flags, whistles. Probably going to be a get well, and I'm saying this may, I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to wait and see. <laughs> yeah, that's like maybe procedure. Okay, it's going to be, well, they called off sides, and they called it against the, uh, they didn't call it procedure. They called it off sides. It could have been the wideout wasn't on the line. It was over the line instead of on the line. The wideout's got to ask the, the line judge over there, am I on, right. on the line? Well, and, and I was, what I was going to say, and I really, you know, maybe should have stayed away from the comment, but I'm going to say it now, is I really thought maybe that that penalty was going to be against the Cougars because I thought co Coach Bobby Carr may have gotten in the ear of this guy over here. And, and Which he has before already. Point, pointed out something that the Cougars were doing wrong, yeah. Quarterback back to throw. He's got some time. Now he's going to be flushed out of the pocket. Steps up. He's going to throw it. And let's see. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. No pass interference. I'd have to say that was close. That was definitely close. <laughs> I guess it was kind of up for grabs a little bit, but I mean, still, it's uh, could have gone either way there. My very, dad, very fortunate. You, my dad used to tell me all the time that close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So, <laughs> well, that was a hand grenade. <laughs> it could have went off. It just didn't go off. Yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I, I see what you did with that. Yeah, that that definitely could have been. That could have blown up and been a penalty. It, it surely could have. 
8.43 to go in the ball game. Cougars are going to get the football back. There's the snap. Looking to punt. There's the punt. what they're yelling at well it looked like and i'm not sure what happened i didn't see it because i was looking at the ball but somebody got hit right here well like i said i didn't see it and and somebody just i mean really somebody needs to grab coach Carr and just get him back to the sidelines i understand that he's upset Yeah, I, and to be honest with you, I don't doubt that he didn't or did or didn't as far as the blindside block goes, but I was looking at the football down there and never saw what happened back up here. Oh, no. I think you're going to get an unsportsmanlike on Coach Carr now. Well, yeah, and, and I'm not, like I say, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not one way or the other. I don't know who's going to get what, but I just never saw the play. I saw the punt, and I saw the ball going down the field, and then I saw, I heard the commotion from back here, but I never actually saw what the play was. It's definitely a kid that's hurt. He's definitely down on the ground, so we want to. Yeah, and, and they're, you know, they're going to take every precaution and check on him. And I understand what Coach Carr, is, you know, he's taken up for his kid. And to be honest with you, I mean, those sort of penalties or those sort of plays or the type plays that they're trying to get out of high school and even college football. Right. And so congratulations for this young man. He gets up and makes his way off the field under his own power. And I don't know what's going to happen on the field as far as penalty yardage or anything else. Now, I do see a penalty flag down on the field, but I'm not sure. Well, that was thrown late. That's when I said, you know, I was afraid Coach Carr would get a penalty. Well, and I, I mean, and it very well may, may be on Coach Carr for being out on the field. Now, like I say, because there was not an early flag thrown for this play. Because to be honest with you, I don't think anybody saw it, but people sitting – Man, in the stands. Gonna, and they're going to pick it up. Right. Yeah, so there's no signal for a penalty. Nope, All right. He's gonna yeah, he's, he's going to call it dead ball, unsportsmanlike against dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Two. Two of them. And an ejection. I'm not sure. He just ejected Coach Carr. He just ejected Coach Carr, I believe. Yeah. Well. And this, I mean, the play itself is ugly. The whole thing about this is, is really ugly, and it's ugly for a Tauga. Now, as far as what was called. Well, since we didn't see it, I mean, it, I, I think the kid, I think we'll be able to see it on TV. He must have got blindsided on that one. I just didn't see it. He definitely was laid out on the field. And right. Coach Carr was upset. And, uh, of course, he's done the worst possible thing to do now, and that's gives the Cougars great field position and got ejected from the game. Uh, well, like I say, I mean, you know, that I reminds did, me of the story I was telling you about uh, Coach James and Matt in the Cottage Hill game that time. I mean, it, it's easy to get in trouble with that white hat. Well, and you know, I mean, Coach Carr was taken up for his kids, sure, and I understand that. But you've got to understand what the white hat had is facing. I, we don't know what was said in the middle of the field. So anyway, there's the whistle as we get started again here in play. 8.37 to go in the ball game. There's Daniel Bubba Nettles as he runs for yardage. 
and he's going to battle out near first down territory. Play gains eight yards on first down. It'll be second down and two. Ball spotted back the rear nose of the football is right at the 43-yard line. So what has really been a clean, well-played football game, all of a sudden here with about eight and a half minutes to go, takes a turn. I don't see a penalty flag anywhere. I'm not sure what's going on here. Oh, he, I think coach is still on the field, maybe. Yeah, yeah. But it looks like, I mean, they, somebody, I mean, he'll be, he'll be okay. Yeah. I mean, coach, he's going to calm down and he'll be okay. And, and, Believe you me, these coaching staffs have, they've talked about situations that could happen just like this. Landon Sims with the football, there's a penalty flag, and it's coming in an area where it's probably going to be holding. And then there's a penalty flag on the sideline and another penalty flag. There's flags flying everywhere. I know one of them is going to be a hold. Not sure what happened on the other side over there. What was a pretty clean ball game is really uh, kind of degenerated here. Well, you've got all kind of emotions going on and everything that's happening like that. It's gotten awful chippy, and there, you got kids, you know, because the other guys, the, you know, the, you got two opposing teams, and one's trying to protect their guy, and the other guys are trying, you know, and. So anyway, there's a big discussion going on in the middle of the field. I think, I think the you're first, right. I think the first flag was a hold. Yeah, I think, and that's going to be against the Cougars. And then you're going to end up with probably offsetting. They're, they're all writing in their little notebooks. Yeah. Anyway, they're trying to get it sorted out, and they will. So you thought you wanted to be a high school football referee. Well, they're taking sign-ups. There's the hole. There's the hole. Dead ball. And it, I'm not sure what that was. Oh, it's, oh, it's two unsportsman likes. Wow. So it was a holding call against the Cougars. So, and here's what more than likely will happen, Rick. They're going to take the holding call, and they're going to because that's a live ball penalty. Right. So they're going to back the holding call up ten yards from the spot, and then from the spot that that ball goes, they will mark off two consecutive, fifteen yard penalties, and that will probably give the Cougars enough for a first down. Wow. So here's the hold, from the spot. There's your ten yards. Okay. Now you're going to have two. 15-yard penalties that go back the other way from that spot. My so goodness. there's five, there's 10, there's 15. That's the first. And there's another 15. And there's five, there's 10, there's 15. That's the second. And that's where the ball will be spotted. It'll be first down and 10 Cougars from that spot. Now, did somebody get ejected on that one? I'm, I'm not sure about that. He was doing all kind of hand motions there for a second, and I lost him when the, I lost him when the yeah, play. Yeah, that's a good job by their coach. Call timeout. Yeah, that's exactly right. Down. Yeah. So let's take a timeout with them. 7:53 to go in the ball game. The score 17 to 14. Otago still leads. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR Atmore, or you could be watching on Facebook or YouTube.
Southern Special Boutique always has something you will love to wear at a price you can surely afford. And with all the excitement of football flying through the air, show your team pride for either Alabama or Auburn Game Day t-shirts available now for adults and children. Like us on Facebook for continuing updates and new arriving merchandise, visit our website at southernsocialboutique.com or visit us at our store location at 101 Main Street in downtown Atmore. You'll love the way you look when your clothes come from Southern Social Boutique. No visit to Ad War is complete until you've experienced Gather. The Gather Restaurant, located at 111 West National Avenue in Atmore, has become the premier location for an incredible dining experience. From delectable appetizers, perfectly seasoned steaks, to sumptuous dessert choices, your mouth is sure to water just thinking about your next trip to Gather. Great food, incredible service, and a finished southern and welcome back. A good defensive play there by Ataga. As on first down and 10, the Cougars try a play at right tackle. Play gains a yard, second down and nine. Cougars with the football, they're in general territory. We've had all kind of stuff going on. 17 to 14 to score. Otago with the lead. Christian Crook in the backfield. Landon Sims. Sims ought to just run it. He's going to throw it. He's going to throw it out of bounds. Yeah. You're right. He should have just ran that one. But that was good pursuit, good defense by Otago. You know, and I don't know whether the Cougars have a play like this. You know, earlier. Otaga tried to run that little reverse play. If we could start a guy from that side coming this way with flow going the way we just did and just flip it to him. The motions highlight that. I mean, basically run. steal the, run their play against them coming back this way. Better hurry. He's only got 10 seconds on the, on the clock. Yeah, third down and nine. Seven seconds. Six, five on the on the play clock. Cougars He's have got to hurry. They're going to they're gonna, no, they're not going to make it. And I believe they got a timeout. Yeah, timeout Cougars. 7.02 to go. And like I say, and, and I'm sorry that I missed it. I mean, I really don't have an opinion as to what happened earlier than I saw a kid laying on the ground and I heard the reaction of the crowd. I know the crowd did not make up what happened. Okay, so something happened, and, and obviously it was, it was, I don't know, it was a blind side. It was a peel back. Somebody got... Somebody got hit and got hit hard. Thank goodness the kid came off the field under his own power. He's not he's not injured. He may be hurt, but he's not injured, and that's a good thing. You know, there's always been that whole thing. There, you know, there's a difference between hurt, being injured. hurt and being injured. And so, yeah, the kid was hurt, but he's not injured. Thank goodness for that. But that just kind of turned this game into, I don't know, it's, it's kind of just been one of those bedlam-type situations now where you got, you know, you got people going after each other. And, I mean, it's a hard-fought football game. But that one particular play just kind of turned the game a little ugly. Yeah. A lot ugly. Cougars with the football, third down and nine. There's the snap. Sims back to throw, looking, 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 looking. He's going to throw it. Got a man open. Oh, he dropped it. And that's going to be incomplete. So a big play there defensively as the Cougars try to go for the end zone. What do you do here, Rick? Seven minutes to go. I would almost put it on the leg of Landon Sims and try to tie the football game up. But the Cougars, are no, they are going to kick it. Well, they better hurry. Yeah, they're not, there's no sense of urgency right here. They need to snap it and get the kick away. There's the snap. There's the kick. It's going to be up, and it's going to be good. good. So we're tied up. Tie ball game. As Landon Sims kicks about a, that's about a 42-yarder, if I remember correctly, where the ball was spotted down. Yeah, I think that's right. So we've had a 41-yarder one way. And we've had the other bunch kick a 42-yarder to tie the ball game up. So kickers making some noise here. And like we said earlier, this is one of those ball games where 
uh, an extra point or something could happen. Ataka had 60 yards in penalties. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, like I say, the penalties, uh, you know, a lot of penalties happening, and I don't know what the – there was some talk down there about I, I don't know. I guess it was about whether or not the kick was good or, or not good. I think I think the coach was saying that maybe it was the other side, and the referee was saying no. It it went over straight over the top of the. Anyway, not not being able to be down there. I'm just kind of looking and the way people are reacting to things and everything else. There's a little pooch kick right in the middle. It's going to be fielded on the run. Got running room. He breaks the tackle. Still on his feet. Breaks inside another tackle on his feet, battling for yardage, and comes all the way out to the 50-yard line. And so let's see, there's a flag down. 57's got his helmet off. I don't know whether he lost it because he got hit, or it could have been because he lost his helmet and continued into the play. You can't do that. Once you lose your helmet, you have to stop. So, like I say, 57 lost his helmet way across the field, and it, and it may be against Otago because he continued pursuing the play. Yeah. I guess it's not like in the longest yard with Adam Sandler where his helmet came off and he continued to run with the ball. <laughs> yeah. Personal foul against Otago. That's a 15-yard penalty. I'm not sure about the personal foul. I'm not sure what, you know, I mean, at this point, to be honest with you, this officiating crew has lost this ball game. They're, they're no longer controlling what's happening on the field. The only thing, you know, the only thing that I can say as far as what's happening on the field right now is they did not ride with us. <laughs> I mean. Well, as a coach for EA, you just got to get them to settle down and play defense and play football. Forget about all those flags and, and that, that whole mess and just yeah. play good football. There's the snap. Handoff's going to be to four. Four's got the football. He's going to run for enough for a first down as he comes all the way across the 45. He'll be spotted at the 48-yard line. So number four, that's Ligon. Carl Ligon comes all the way out across the 45 to the 48-yard line, or 47. They mark it back. But it will be a first down, first down and 10 for Otago. Yeah, he definitely got cramps. He's grabbing his toes and... Yeah, and, and you know what makes it worse is is because of all the excitement and everything else that's going on, both of these teams are just really, they're ex expelling a lot of energy right now, a lot of kinetic energy. That's a big word. A lot of kinetic energy being uh, used out there by both of these teams as they just go after each other. I mean, this is really a hard-fought game. Uh, just We're just hoping to get to the end of this thing both teams unscathed and injury free. And that is number four coming off and, and it's no wonder that he's cramping because he's been the workhorse all night long. And he just probably needs to get him a little breather and somebody needs to get some get some sort of liquid in him. He's gonna try to stretch him out. He's he's got somebody on the sidelines gonna straighten those legs out and try to get rid of the cramps. But at this point, that doesn't help very much. It does get rid of him, but he just needs to be hydrated. With some quality H to it. Uh, no doubt. Quarterback back to throw. Ooh. He's got a man open. If he can hit him, he does hit him, and that's going to be a touchdown. Robert Rose.
as eight Andon High, um, Hillier, I'm sorry, Andon Hillier got behind the defense as he run, ran by folks. Actually, I'm sorry, I believe that's number eight. That's James Wright. Yeah, that's James Wright, sure is. Uh, I think it's hard to see their numbers crinkled up like that, but he, he hit him in stride. It was a beautiful pass. Uh, hit him straight in stride. So Wright scores the touchdown on the long throw. Can't let him get wide open like that. Point after touchdown, and let's see what happened. It's going to be a dead ball. It's going to be a false start against the offense on the extra point. So that's going to back the play up five yards, so they'll kick the point after again. It'll be five yards further back. So the ball will be spotted at about the 16-yard line, so it'll be a 26-yard extra point. There's the snap. The kick is down. It is up, and it is good. good. So with 5.50 to go in the ball game, the score, Otaga Academy 24, Escambia Academy 17. Let's take a break. You're listening to Cougar Football on WBZR at more, or you could be listening on Facebook or YouTube. Penalty flags fly on the kickoff. I think a toggle is going to be called for all sides. I'll have to recap. It looks like they're going to back it up. So offsides on the kickoff team for a toggle. They're going to line the ball up. It'll be spotted back at the 35. It was at the 40. And so everybody will have to back up five yards and we'll re-kick it. See what, he kicked that straight through the end zone again. That kid's got a cannon for a leg. He does that. That's going to be Sean Pierce. He's kicked a 41-yard field goal in the ball game already. And he's uh, boomed one through the end zone the last time Ataga kicked off. He's five yards deeper this time. He's going to approach the ball and kick it. It's going to be end over end. It's not going to make the end zone, but it yes. goes over everybody's head. And so the Cougars are going to take over the football first down and 10. The ball's going to be spotted at the 20 with 5.50 to go here in the ball game. And this has been a long night at the old ballpark tonight here at the old ball field. And, uh, boy, we've had all kind of stuff going on. And I'm looking over at my uh, phone and I'm hoping that I've got enough battery life to make it through the broadcast. We can switch to my phone if we need to. Well, uh, Joe, I am going to warn you now, if something happens and I drop off the air, wait for my call back. We'll be calling you back. There's LaDaniel Bubba Nettles right up the middle. That play fails to gain. As the... Actually, they're going to give him a gain of about a half yard. We'll call it a long nine. Second down and nine, a long nine for the Cougars.
Five minutes, 20 seconds to go in the ball game. Clock running. Cougars trailing 24-17. There's the snap. Fake is going to be to Nettles. Play action. Quarterback looking down the field. Got a man. Nope, he's not going to be open as they look like they were trying to hit number 10, J.J. Stevens. And Stevens just didn't have enough wheels to run that one down. So the play falls incomplete. The ball incomplete with 5.02. The clock stops. And the Cougars will run a third down and nine play. Third down and nine, 5.02 to go in the ball game. Cougars trailing by a score of 24-17. There's the snap. Sims looking to throw. Looking, looking. Got a man open. Throws it. It's going to come off the hands of number 11. Or actually number six. number six. Yeah, that's going to be Jacob Lee. I thought Bubba had come out of the backfield, but that was Jacob Lee on the out route there, and that ball between two defenders was just a little bit high for Jacob. They'll be forced to punt right here. So the Cougars are going to turn the ball over on downs. They're going, or actually, they're going to have to punt it away. Four fifty-seven to go in the ball game. Just inside five minutes. There's the snap. There's a high punt. Going to be angled out of bounds and go out of bounds just inside general territory. It's going to be spotted out at the 47-yard line where it will be first down and 10 for Otago. Four fifty-two to go. Cougars trailing 24-17. Otago with the ball and now with the clock on their side. And I'm sure that Otago will be watching the play clock as they're going to let as much time elapse off the play clock as they can. Now at 10 seconds, 9, 8, 7, they'll probably snap it with about three seconds to go. They snap it with four. There comes four. Speaking of four, he fumbles the football, but it's out of bounds. That was dangerous. Carl Ligon was coming near side toward us and drop the football along the sideline, but the ball just kind of dribbles its way out of bounds. It's going to be second down and seven. Ball just inside Cougar territory now at the 49. With the ball going out of bounds, good thing for the Cougars, it stops the clock, 447. Slot set to the right, wide receiver to the left. There's a slant pass that's going to be caught. Well, that's a first down. And it is going to be enough for a first down for Otago. First down, down and 10. The clock stops with the movement of the chains. Now it's whistled into play. It'll restart. 438, clock moving here in the fourth quarter. 24-17, the Escambia Academy Cougars trailing Otaga Academy. First down and 10, there's the snap. Quarterback's going to keep it. He's going to slide down after crossing the 40-yard line. And a smart play there because he gained some yardage, gained what he could get, about five yards on the carry, but he keeps the clock running. Now at four minutes even, second down and five. Ball inside the 40, spotted at the Cougar 38. Clock continuing to run, 3.45 to go in the ball game. Otaga in no hurry as they approach to the line. They look up, still got seven seconds, six seconds on the play clock. There's the snap. Handoff is going to be to four. He's going to bounce it outside. Got a blocker. He's got running room. Breaks the tackle. Comes back up the middle. Breaks another tackle. And he's going to go in the end zone for a touchdown. 
And that's going to seal it up more than likely for Ataga. And there goes penalty flags in the end zone as Ataga is going to be penalized because people ran from the sideline, I believe, all the way down to get into the celebration. At this point, I don't really think they care. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. <laughs> 17, 30 to 17 to score. Three twenty-four to go in the ball game. Unsportsmanlike against the Generals for the celebration after the touchdown. And like I say, otherwise I don't think that would have been called except for the fact that somebody left the sidelines and went down there and got involved in it. 30 to 17 the score. Number 28, Sean Pierce goes to the field, middle of the field. He's going to kick the ball and try to add a point to a Tauga score. I think the A's opted to take the penalty on the kickoff so they can get some good field position. That looks like it's going to be a uh, delay a game penalty. No, it's going to be movement. False start. What's that stuff we used to use? Kramer Jesus. Kramer Jesus. Yeah, Kramer Jesus. These, yeah. these referees are going to need that for their elbows. No <laughs> doubt. Three twenty-four to go. Here's the extra point. It is up and it is good. And so with 3.24 left here in the ball game, the score, Otaga Academy 31, Escambia Academy 17. And Joe, just bear with me now. I am uh, still watching the phone. Welcome back. A 14-point Otaga lead with 3.20 left to go here in the football game. And, Rick, I agree with you in your assessment of Sean Pierce, number 28, in his leg. That kid can kick the football. He's a, I mean, he besides even just extra points and field goals, he's a weapon just on the kickoffs. I believe... All right, so 316 remaining in the football game. And the Cougars with the football. Slot set to the right side. Timeout is going to be taken. And we'll just stay here. Joe, I'm still watching my timer, still watching everything. Of course, this game, we're into three hours and one minute here on this football game broadcast tonight. And like I say, if the call happens to drop, we'll call you right back with another phone on the line. We're, uh, I'm watching this one to see that it lasts all the way through it. Glad you folks joined us. I tell you, this has been a good one all the way through. It's been, it's been a little chippy at times, and I tell you, these teams have really gotten after each other. Of course, you expect that. The number one team uh, in the state and the number two, and they are playing like number one and number two. 
Otaga really a good football team. We knew that coming in. And tonight they've played really well. A lot of it on the legs of number four, Carl Ligon, the running back, 5'10", 175-pound senior. And he's done a lot of the work with his legs. And their quarterback has thrown some two really good passes spot on on, on, on go patterns. I mean, wide open receivers, but he hit them in stride. Yeah, you know, and that's, that's one thing we really didn't hear that much about them as far as their capability to throw, but they've shown tonight that they can throw the football as well. 3.16 to go, Cougars with the football. There's the snap, looking downfield. That's going to be Landon Sims looking to throw. He's got a man open. Let's see. He's going to call it incomplete. incomplete. I believe he's saying that the ball hit the ground. Is that he just likes pounding the turf with his fist? The referee does. <laughs> Three eleven to go here in the ball game. Cougars with the football. It'll be second down and ten. You know something we alluded to earlier is the defensive backs of this team from Otaga. They really cover well. Hey, look, this is a good football team. There's just no doubt about it. They 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 play good defense. Uh, they play good offense. Uh, the worst thing that happened, they lost the cool a little bit with some of the unsportsmanlike uh, penalties. But uh, uh, they're a good football team. They play good. Same. Even after their coach got ejected, they continue to play disciplined football. So good, good defensive football anyhow. 2.48 to go here in the ball game. Cougars with the football. There is a penalty flag. Let's see, that's going to be against the Cougars as they're backing up. It's procedure. So a five-yard mark off against the Cougars, going to take the ball back five yards, third down and nine. Direct snap's going to be to the quarterback. That's Landon Sims. Sims trying to pick his way. Puts his head down and he crosses the 35. It's going to be right there close to a first. He's got to hurry, though. They don't have a whole lot of time. Yeah, you don't have a lot of time, and you got to score 14 points just to tie the game up. 31-17 the score. 2.18 to go here in the ball game. Cougars trailing. There's a snap. Landon Sims, he's going to run it. And he's going to get enough for a first down. That's going to move the chains. Stop the clock momentarily until the white hat winds it again, and he does as the chains get in place. That's the only reason they stop it on a first down is to give the chains time to move. There's penalties. That's the procedure on the A. Yep. Illegal procedure against the Cougars. That's going to back them up five yards. And Jacob Lee took a step forward, then took a step backward. So now first down and 15. The ball backed up. Once you get set, you got to stay that way. There's the snap. Sims looking downfield. He's getting flushed. Got a throw. Throw it on the run. Got a man open. Stepping out of bounds. That's going to be number one, Malachi Haynes. To be honest with you, I believe that's the first time tonight we've called Malachi's name. And he's usually heavily involved in the offense. Got to get ready. 151 and counting here in the ball game. I've seen stranger things happen. You got enough time to win this game, still, or at least tie it up here. There's the snap. Sims looking downfield. Going to step up, going to throw. Up. Is unable to hit number 17. Coming across the middle. So 1.43 to go with the incomplete pass. Cougars with the football, second down and 10. Ball just short of the 50 at the Cougar 49-yard line. Clock will start on the snap. 
Slots both sides. Single set back in the backfield with Sims. Sims looking to throw. Going to be flushed up. Going to pull it down. Finally going to see a man across the middle. Going to throw it. And let's see if they call it a catch or an incomplete. Incomplete. So that play is incomplete. Third down now, third down and 10. A minute 30 to go in the ball game. Slots to both sides, single set back in the backfield. And that's going to be incomplete as well as it wouldn't have mattered anyway. That play was going to lose yardage because the receiver went to one knee to try to catch it. It's going to bring up a fourth down. And so to put it in the words of Dandy Don Meredith, that's your song you like to sing. It's now or never. Yeah, I don't think I'll sing it tonight. One twenty-seven to go. There's the snap. Sims looking to throw. He gets flushed. He gets hit. He's going to be sacked. And the Cougars are going to give the football over on down. And Otaga Academy is going to win this football game. Clock still moving with a minute 10. Landon Sims is getting helped up off the dirt. Clock now stopped with 107 to go. And Otaga is going to beat the number one team in the state. Number two beats number one. But I, but I imagine these two teams are going to see each other down the road. I know it's hard to accept and hard, hard for somebody to hear sometimes, but sometimes a loss like this could do you a lot of good. There's a lot of things EA needs to work on. Uh, they played kind of undisciplined tonight at times. Uh, uh, Otaga played very, I mean, hardly ever was there a, a, an EA receiver open. And uh, they played good containment. They're just a good football team. And so uh, a game like this sometimes can do you more good than harm if you if you do the right thing with it. And I'm sure Coach Fountain will. Straight handoff after the uh, and uh, number four. Ligon is going to take the ball around right in, and then he's just going to fall down on the ground. And this is to back to what you're saying. This is not the state championship. Right. This is one game. Uh, EA can work on the things they need to work on. Well, Coach, you know, Coach Hugh Fountain talked about that prior to the game. You know, as, as important as this game is, it, it's not the last game of the year. You know, there's still a lot to play for. 30 seconds, 29 now to go in the ball game, and Otaga's just going to take a knee. They can run the clock out. So that's going to be it. So that'll wrap up the ball game by the final score of Otaga 31, Escambia Academy 17. And we're going to go ahead and wrap up our broadcast as we uh, invite you to come join us next week at home. It'll be a homecoming weekend in Canoe. Yeah. So there will be a, a really important reason to be there, homecoming weekend in Canoe. And, uh, we also have the class of 81 having, having their reunion there. It's 40 years. Yep, 40 years reunion. That's my, that's my that's senior that's year. And you'll be there. I will, I, will, I will actually be there. I'll be, you know, maybe maybe um, the, the folks at EA will let me celebrate my uh, 40th year uh, out of school with them, for, with their senior class. So anyway, final score, Escambia Academy 31, or I'm sorry, uh, Atoga Academy 31, Escambia Academy 17. So uh, EA is going to lose their first game of the year. Atoga is going to remain undefeated. And uh, both teams met at halftime, and now they're going to wrap it up. So we will wrap it up as well. Homecoming weekend next week. Come be with us. We'll be in Canoe, Alabama. Y'all, please be safe out there. We love y'all. And um, and try to make it to church on Sunday. Y'all y'all get to church on Sunday, and, uh, and your week will go a whole lot better. I promise you that. 31 to 17, the final score. We'll see you next week from Canoe. You've been listening to Escambia Academy Cougar Football on WBZR, 105.9 FM and Atmore, or you could have been watching on Facebook or YouTube.